Okay, we're live, hey, everybody. Thanks for popping in. We have, for the first time ever, the Hack Get Together. And today we've got all our friends are here tonight to, to share this uh, momentous occasion. Uh, on my screen, anyway, from left to right, we got Brian Cote. Hey, Brian, how are you? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Cool, cool. We've got Dave R's Guitars. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> We got <laughs> Jason Wade. Hey, everybody. Got? We got Quentin F and James. <laughs> hey, Sylvester. Sylvester's hey, here. Sylvester. And I'm the hack. So hope everybody's having a great day and a great evening. And, uh, yeah, this is something I thought about doing for, for a long time. And I thought, what the hell, why not, why not try it and see how it goes? So how's everybody doing today? All there, good, man. brother. All good, all good. Doing well, hey. doing well. Cool, cool, man. Hang in there. So, let me just throw a question out there. Uh -oh. So today I put out a video. I called it "Keep It Clean." And the reason I said I called it that was because I wanted to do something that did not involve any dirt or gain or distortion or any whatever you want to call it. So what I wanted to ask you guys is, is that something you guys ever do? Do you ever, like, just play clean and not add all kinds of gain on, on your stuff? And, and do you like to? Yeah, I play clean all the time. <laughs> no, dude, you were a lot. I mean, when you when you pull out, you know, uh, that that Gibson, what is it? Three thirty nine. Three thirty nine. I mean, it just it, you know, you don't plug that into a metal zone. It just <laughs> it makes you it makes you play it a, a different way. Yeah. It's a telly or or you know a semi hollow body. It just it makes you it, it makes you play that that guitar. So yeah, you were you're on a clean sound. I was like, yeah, I was digging it. Yeah, well, don't you can't play. Actually, that one sounds really nice, dirty too. I used it a lot, dirty as well. But it's got that whole sort of vibe. You know what I mean? So, Brian, you ever play clean, or are you always uh, well? Not like you like, I guess. Well, sometimes I do, but not 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 very often. Not very often, but I do sometimes. It depends on what I'm doing. No, I do a lot of acoustic. I've done a shitload of acoustic videos since I got that little used Alvarez. Right, yeah, right. I don't even own an acoustic. Yeah, I, I sold mine last year. Yeah. Probably with you kids, man. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Dave? Uh, a little bit of both, right? I do a little bit of clean stuff. Yeah, I saw you playing clean on that Mockingbird the other day. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it, man, that the color on that guitar just kills me. I love it. That's a great you. red. Yeah, that's a that's a really sharp looking guitar, man. What? What did I do? Stop <laughs> it! <laughs> get, some wants, get some he buster on the mic. Or something, I guess. Or you want some coffee or something? Here, hold on. Here, here. You what about you, coffee? Jason? Yeah, of course I play clean. Yeah, you play clean more than anybody, man. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying to Jason, I was just commenting on on the video. I said that's got. I said I was getting a little bit of that Jason Wade vibe in there. Oh, I don't know about all that. <laughs> play nice and mellow, and you know. Oh, look, look out! Here's Will. Will made it to the party. Uh oh, Will's here. Oh, no. Will's here. actually, yeah. You know what? Let me let me pop in the chat here real quick and just say hello to everybody. Oh, dear Lord. Lord. I usually say that at the start. Okay, first one in here today was Lori's Mishmash. How are you? I rock the blues. Nice to see you. There's Todd Flowers. Hey, buddy. Uh, Ladybug is in, is in here. Hey, Ladybug. Nocturnal, as always, welcome. Janice is here. Hey, Janice. Dry Heat. Hey, buddy. What else we got in here? Oh, we got Eric, EVH and Gear TV. Hey, man. Flat Frets, a.k.a. Showman Blues, is in here. How are you, man? The Guru. Fender Guru. 
It's going to stay up with us today. That's awesome. Gary Holtz, how are you? Jay Steen, nice to see you. Gary Tholander, Lars Guitar, what's up, Doc? Awesome. Dwight Bailey is here. Layla's Guitar Daddy, nice to see you. Mitch Heyman, hey, man, Cheddar's in here. It's a rogues gallery. Yeah, really. DC Rich 581. Oh, uh, my God, everyone. Charles Green, hey, man. <clears throat> David uh, Ennis. Okay. I'm just, yeah, I'm catching up. I'm catching up. I always end up saying everybody's name like three times. I see Eric's in here. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> here. I do want to say hi to Will. How's it going, Will? What's up, How's buddy? Going, buddy? Hey, Gene Schmidt. Nice to see you. Michael Bishop. How's it going? Axe paying too much attention to the chat. He hadn't seen this yet. <laughs> I've seen no, it no. already. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it. Uh, hey, Will Varela. There he is. Okay, it's an all-kiss show. As of now, Joe Hervey 84, man. Nice to see you. Lando 27, how are you? And of course, the chat jumped on me. There's David Ennis. There's Dale Palmer. How are you guys? I got anyway. Okay, there we go. Is that better? Jimmy T. Hey, man. Paul Lou. I think Marsman. Okay, I think I got everyone. If I missed you, just tag me in the chat and I'll see you right away. Everyone, if anyone's got any questions, are all you guys in the chat? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Jasko Plumbing. So, guys, so get this. Oh. Jasko Plumbing has taken it upon himself to get me to a thousand subs. So, uh, nice. So every 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 couple of day or every day or two, I'm getting, uh, you know, a comment on one of my videos. Yeah, Jasko Plumbing made me come on your channel or something. Like that. Oh. <laughs> it's like, what is he holding these people for ransom? What's going on there? You know, I thought that was pretty. Funny. Remember the ace makeup. Remember that's a deal. Okay, so we changed that. The first of all, that's your deal. That's oh. not mine. That's you. <laughs> okay, but here's what we're gonna. Here's what I said I would do. I would play. I will learn and play a Pink Floyd song when I hit a thousand. That I will do. No. I can. I, okay. I got a couple I can teach you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just teach me the really easy one. The really easy one. A really, uh, a really fast one. Yeah, yeah. Van L. Singh, welcome. Uh, okay, hang on, hang on. I can't share my methods, but I'm going to get you there. <laughs> That's <just. laughs> I think he's only people for ransom. Okay, um, yeah, so um, have you guys been reading about this whole thing with um, – with uh, Mark Ignisi and uh, him. Gibson. And they pulled the video, by the way. So Mark Ignisi shot a video a while back talking about, you know, protecting the Gibson brand and whatever and, you know, and being real defensive and about Gibson. Oh, oh, wait a minute. We got a surprise oh, guest in here. here. Eddie Van Halen. <clears throat> Eddie Van Halen is here. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Get everybody behave. <laughs> How's it going, Eric? Doing very well. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. The nice panel here, man. This is great. Yeah, man. <laughs> Got a whole rogues gallery, as Cheddar puts it in here today. Mr. Eric, what's happening? There's, so my... There's my boy. There he is. I was hanging out with a bird today, too, a robin. Was, we were digging dirt, and they were looking for worms. Woo. What's up, everybody? Say hi to the bird. You got, you got your pool all sorted out. I saw it earlier today. Yeah, just crank the filter. It's working. I like, love it. filled in probably about three and a half tons of dirt by hand with one shovel at a time while I'll sometimes. Oh, oh man. Mm -hmm. You're going to wake up sore tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got the medication for it, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're in Canada. Of course you do. Yep. 7%, 7 medication. <laughs> Yeah, so what do you guys think of that whole uh, Mark Ignisi thing with uh, Gibson? Did you guys see – first of all, did you see that video? I, I, didn't, saw, I, didn't, yes. I didn't see the video, but was he just basically threatening all the, like, boutique and small builders? No. He was basically nope. threatening any company that copied their, their mm -hmm. design, their single-cut design. Their IP mm -hmm. intellectual property. Yeah. Well yeah. – <clears throat> I kind of saw it a different way. 
<laughs> uh, <clears throat> so I, I think the message was good. The delivery was kind of bad. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it was, I, I don't, I really don't think Mark Agnesi wrote it, but I don't think he was the right one to give that message. And the reason why is I, I, I've watched a lot of Agnesi because I watched Guitar of the Day or uh, at Nor you know, Norman's Rare Guitar of the Day for a long time mm -hmm. until he left until he left the show. And I know I know Mark, at least on camera, his personality can be, shall we say, abrasive slightly. Um, so was he the right one to deliver that message? I don't think so. But I, I, I think what he really did was he, he really he was really putting the overseas counterfeiters on notice. Yeah. Um, not not so much, you know, in the in the people that are that are one to one counterfeiting <clears throat> Gibson guitars. I, I really think he's putting them on notice as well, because you know, yeah, they're the ones that built they're the ones that built it. You know, they have the they have the, you know, they have the design patents. So, you know, uh, well, there was that lawsuit against PRS that they they lost. Yeah, their whole their whole grounds were anything that resembled. The, actually, it was very funny. Actually, they said that any guitar from the like if you're in the in the crowd in a smoky crowd and a single cut design, it it offers confusion to you know people if they're understanding it's a PRS or it's a, a Les Paul. And they basically threw that right out of court because they said you know anybody walking in to buy a Les Paul is never ever going to confuse a Les Paul with a PRS. I mean, they're not going to walk out with a single cut PRS and go, oh, I got ripped off. I mean. No. Well, they'll catch on right away when they don't get a case. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Is that all out? Sorry. <laughs> but, well, it's a yeah. telling, telling thing that they pulled the video. That says a lot right there. So. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what I read did. that they pulled it. Yeah, it, it was only up for a few hours. Um so there are people that still have that video floating around. Mm -hmm. um, I, it, and Jason, I, I, I know you're, uh, you're, uh, you, you, you can see it as well as me. <laughs> so I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind taking a look at it. Now I can, you know, I can understand like we need to have China Mike in here. You know, I can understand the whole ship, you know, ordering a guitar from China that actually has Gibson on the headstock and, Made in USA. Yeah. And all that. I can yeah. understand that, but you know the Chinese have been freaking stealing intellectual property and trademarks for since forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I kind of get what you know. Part of the intent, which is they want to reclaim, you know, the Gibson name and all that, and it goes back to them getting back on the right track and providing quality stuff and all of that kind of stuff. But, you know, a lot of people, when they see stuff like that, that those videos that, cause there is a lot of Gibson hate out there. And sure. I think it just really fuels the fire when they start <clears throat> saying like, we're the only company that's going to make this and you got to buy our product, you know? Yeah. It was a little, I don't know, pretentious is the word or. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Well, I mean, he, you know, he, during the video, he did point out, you know the the mustache or the open book design on the headstock. He he pointed out the split diamond. He he pointed out you know he he pointed out things that were that were specifically Gibson, right? Mm -hmm. And you know and and that's that's what he was referring the the body design, <clears throat> the body you 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 don't have a you don't have a patent on the body design, but other things like the headstock, the headstock shape. And the designs on the headstocks, you can you can have trademarks on those, and Gibson does on those trademarks. And and when you when you copy it, you're 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 in violation. But I think any any especially a boutique builder, I, I think they they're very well aware of that. That's why headstock design is always the hardest thing for a, for a builder. Because, yeah. like, look at the like the Strat style. Look how many people went through that, and they've had to go with crazy different shapes. Uh, yeah. 
Fender is very, very, um, you know, st strict with that per that patent. But I mean, sure. that's that's the hardest thing for builders to come up with a cool headstock that's not going to infringe on somebody. And don't get me started on the Mac Mall headstock. As Henning Henning will comment in the video, and I'll get a call from him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it's just those headstocks are so iconic that it's really hard to come up with something that you know will fly, right? And it's just me. Yeah. I mean, can a head can a headstock? I mean, for me, a headstock can make or break a guitar. For me, I agree, hundred percent. Oh, totally, yeah. Be looking, man. I, I can't deal with it. Well, that's the biggest issue that I have with Epiphone Les Pauls is the headstock. Yeah, it's that's not exactly good. right, Mozzie. It's like Jackson, Jackson came out with a headstock that it, you know, it's like that's just badass, you know. Yep, and and here again with Gibson with Kramer. Kramer now being under the Gibson brands for quite some time now. Anything with that banana style headstock or the the odd shaped headstock, they're very very um they they watch that very closely, and they and they, they value their IP on that. You mean I that just want to say hello? Sorry, a few more people popped in here. Barefoot mode, how are you? Welcome. Let's see, Dwight Bailey. If I haven't said hello. And folks, if you've got questions, please tag us. Bad gig blues. Hey, chicken guitars. Chicken guitars in here. Yeah. Hey, chicken guitars. How are you? Nice to see you. Joe Hervey, eighty-four. If I haven't said hello, hello, and it just jumped on me again. Rick Heffner is here. Walid is here. Braxel. Spencer Cron. Yeah, is here. Hey, Spencer Cron. How are you? Uh. So since I haven't seen any of this, what exactly? Okay, so Bad Gig Blues is saying, what exactly did Agnesi say? First of all, I don't think Agnesi. I think he was somebody wrote him a script. Read this, right? Because I don't know. Though it sounded to me like that was pretty scripted out, and and it, it and even when he was talking, the way it struck me was like it was kind of hard to to say it without leaning to that sort of threatening tone you know what i mean yeah but in a nutshell what it, what they were saying uh what he was saying bad gig blues was uh that gibson is going to be very vigilant now in protecting their brand and they're going to go after uh companies that copy their trademark gibson design and you were just mentioning a few things on the the custom oh, the shit. Hold, on. hold on hold on we got we got we got a. Uh... Wait a minute, I got one sign left. <laughs> Here we go. Archie. <laughs> Archie's in the house. Archie. Hey, Archie. How are you, man? What's up, buddy? There you go. Quentin with the cue cards. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He's been working on that all day. I know. Yeah. All day. I'm, I'm such an artist. Halo on Fire 71. How are you? Half face. Nice to see you. Braxel's having ribeye. Hey, guitarded, Warren H. With, with or without ketchup? Yeah, I'm good. Don't go there. Hi, buddy. <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> Don't go there. Well, Ernie Ball, uh, go back to headstock. Ernie Ball's got the. Don't they have a patent on the, the on four the and two, the four tuners and the two tuners? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. You can do five and one, or you can do three. You know, three and three, but you can't do four and two. No. Hey, Mike Heath, Papa Blue, how are you? That's why you're new names in here today. Awesome. Uh, Walid uh, is saying, I don't think it's a script. Mark Neath is an unpleasant person. It was natural for him to be condescending. He was already bashing Andertons and Toman on his personal channel. Oh. Okay. Hmm. See, I only know I, my only exposure to Mark Agnesi was like you were saying, Dave, on uh, Norman's Rare Guitars. Yeah, I, yeah didn't, I, I just didn't. Same I didn't here. like that guy from the word go. I don't. I don't know why. Really? Yeah, I don't know why. I, you know, when I found out he got hired by Gibson, I was actually pretty happy about it. So, because I, because I, you know, I figured because he's a guy that would definitely keep him on track. You know what I mean? Just, just, just maybe. 
Uh, Matt Moss is saying, if fans of Gibson want to support Gibson by Gibson, if you are nothing but a poser, more concerned about the name on the headstock than the quality of the instrument by Chibson. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So you guys know, didn't take a shine of Ignisi even before this then, eh? Yeah, but that's just, I don't know. That's just me. I mean, I've, you know, I was in sales, so I, so I can, I can, I can see a sales guy in five seconds, man. And he just seemed like too much of a sales guy to me. And proof is his first video for Gibson. Yeah, it wasn't very good. <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming out. I, 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 I didn't see the video and I didn't follow him much. I, I only knew his name um, through his other, uh, you know, gig. Um, but it is a little soon out of the gate, and, and who knows? I mean, it's it's odd to see the video go away, and that's something no company really wants to do because then you got to deal with that after. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. I, I I remain very very neutral with with Gibson for obvious reasons, but um, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said earlier, I I, I think there was there was a good message behind it, but the delivery was just it, it was it was bad. <laughs> it was bad. It almost sounds like one of my ideas. I always say this to Sandra. I got this great idea. Quentin knows about this. We're going to go play a festival, and I want to get our name out there. So we're going to put our logo on Frisbees. We're going to throw out 300 Frisbees at people. Now we've provided a weapon to the crowd. <laughs> not a good idea. Next idea, not a good idea. Right. <laughs> you know, the, 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 the underlying message, at least in my opinion, was you know, buy original. Don't, you know, don't buy the, don't buy the counterfeits. Buy the, buy the real deal, right? Be it. Be it Epiphone, be it Gibson, buy the real deal. Well, Gary Tholander saying the video is still out there. Yeah, I probably repost it. See, the same thing happens over in, in the EVH world, too, with Wolfgangs. And I feel really bad because a lot of us here on the panel, and I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look to, like, Hack and, and Brian and, um, uh, and uh, well, for sure, Quentin as well, too. Like, people that know Gibsons or they know uh, real Wolfgangs, and Jason has Wolfgangs. Okay, you, you know what they look like, you know the real deal, but some kids, and I say kids, and I shouldn't say kids, but younger people, not so educated when it comes to the brands out there, they'll see something from one of these, you know, European online resellers for like a Wolfgang for 399 bucks, like or, or $200. Oh, I can get this, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh my God, and I've seen some of these things come in. It's almost like they trace the guitar and they cut it out of wood, like a reasonable facsimile of it, almost like a mm -hmm. photocopy of the guitar. And I mean, the Floyd's no good. The Floyd's made out of like tin foil. The pickups are just like a microphone in the guitar. Uh, the fretboard is like balsa wood. Uh, it's just absolutely crap. And I mean, for a three hundred dollar guitar, they could even buy Indonesian import authentic for right. five hundred bucks U.S. Um, but yeah. there are there are honest people, um, and even myself, not ever owning a real Gibson Les Paul, I could I could go to a store. In a mom and pop shop, and I could look at a guitar thinking, okay, this Gibson is nice. I would not, I don't have the knowledge myself to tell if it's a real or fake. I know you guys do, but I wouldn't know if it's fake or not. And there's a lot of other people that could get taken for a ride. And I think that's yeah. kind of what they're going after. And I think that's exactly good. that's my yeah. thought. That's my thought too, right? That, that's know, what I said. I, I think the message was good, but the delivery was just not mm -hmm. the company, the company that popped, sorry, the, the company that popped into my head when I was listening to him talk was actually uh, Harley Benton. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's what I was thinking. He was kind of insinuating, right? Because they're like, they're making everything, man. I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, butterscotch tallies, you know, Gibson, like, and yeah, they know, just everybody. came out with that new, uh, what was it? The, the single uh, the, double junior? cut and single cut P90, mm -hmm. the juniors or oh. whatever. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Didn't they make a near copy of Pete Thorne's sewer guitar, too? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. they did. Yeah. From what, yeah, from what I did. understand, too, he wasn't on, none too pleased about that. No, he wasn't. Uh, Walid is saying that's the whole story of Gibson. When they think they put their head out of problems, they always do a shitty move that tarnishes their image. Yeah, if you think about it, up until this moment, getting that new you know, CEO, JC, and all that, it was all puppies and sunshine. But this really kind of torpedoed that momentum, eh? Like that one video. You know, it's crazy how quickly, you know, things can turn, right? I think they'll recover from that. But, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Recover, Look at it. It'll sting for a while. Everybody talk, everybody's talking about that video. Everybody's talking about Gibson. So, yeah. on the other hand, any publicity, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
but yeah, they got to be careful, man. They're they're riding the fence on. Everybody's watching them. Yep. Hey, uh, Greg Summers is here. Welcome, Greg. Sir is not a Fender company. No copy, same. That's what hand Fender solo, copy. but it's sir. Fend oh, Fender copy. I'm sorry. Because it does resemble, yeah. you know, the S type body and. It's like, Everybody, sure. It's like everybody's making stuff. everybody's guitar, though, man. You know, if you think if you think about, it, I mentioned earlier about Fender with the proprietary headstock with the Strat. Look at the vintage Kramers. You know, uh, eighty circa eighty two, they had the Strat style headstock. And we're, you know, do you guys know where the beak headstock came from? Basically, sawing off half that little that little curve. That's where the beak came right. from. They said, okay, right. it's assist, so they just got the saws out and cut them off. Oh. <laughs> and that's what I'm. Iconic... I'm just looking at my headstock going. I can cut my headstock off, can I? I know. Yeah, that's an iconic <laughs> headstock now because it's just sawed off. Right. <laughs> Hey, Clam Fingers, Mark Way, time has been kind, Stafford Studio, welcome, folks. Clam Greg fingers. Summers is here. You know, I'm sitting here looking at the chat, calling out names, and the two people that shouldn't be calling out names are Quentin James and Guitar. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Very true. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm reading them through in my mind before I just belt it out. <laughs> exactly. I'm, think, I'm thinking about Nocturnal. I'm going, sweetie, I'm, I'm reading the names to myself like 10 times before I say anything. <laughs> you know, it, every pronunciation to make sure. <laughs> Uh, I, said, I said the other day too. Some I could I could get a name like Bob Jones wrong. I'd say Bob Jones. It's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if, if I was just on the wrong syllable, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let me. I got a question for you guys. As far as that goes, um, how many body styles, guitar body styles, are there? Less than what ten? Yeah. Across yeah. the board. I mean, nobody's come out. I mean, yeah, you've got you know some of the extreme body styles as far as that goes but the the ones that everybody gravitates towards the ones everybody buys is a strat les paul right t, t style yeah. you know the offset style as far as that goes so you've only got it's just like the chords as far as that goes on a guitar and notes on the guitar yeah. you've only got so many and you've got a lot of guitar companies trying to put their stamp on whatever it is they're selling to the public he's, trying to get their piece of the pie. You know what I'm saying? I think if he's it's not still, the, yeah. the only company that's doing a lot of different bodies of the body designs that seem to be seem to be doing pretty good in the guitar industry. Mm -hmm. But they can't get the colors right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I think if you're not <laughs> buying a Les Paul, if you're not buying a Les Paul, you're buying some form of a super strat. And that could be anything yeah. from a Charvel, yeah. could be a Kramer, could be uh, a sewer, could be a Kiesel. The mm -hmm. super strat is if you're not a Les Paul guy. The super strat guitar is been it's been going forever and i think it always will be mm -hmm. even a tom anderson which i love so much mm -hmm. they're super strats they are yeah yep. two, two humbuckers a good a good bridge maybe a fixed bridge of yeah. lloyd in a lot of cases yeah hey sunny breaks welcome there's a new name yeah you know i mean how many people make a how many companies i should say make like a v you know you get the Les Paul V, you got the Jackson V. Who else makes a V? Framus. It makes a V. No. Framus, yeah. Framus, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. That, that guitar that TTK got, man, was like freaking eight grand or something. It's like, and it came in a gig bag. You're killing me. Yeah. I don't care how good the gig bag was. Isn't it like a thousand yeah. dollars You better give me a case with it. Hey, hey that's a, Dean. Oh, yeah, Dean. Dean, yeah, okay. Eastwood Airline makes a V guitar, V guitar, and V bass as well. Mm, Washburn, Michael Sweets, uh, yeah, yeah. signature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's everybody's just making everybody's guitar, really. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, well, then you got BC Rich. I mean, now they had they had a few iconic designs, you know, the the bitch, the warlock, um, the the mockingbird. You know, the, those are those are those are three iconic designs, and of course, they've been. Yeah, some of them have been ripped off pretty hard. So. The ones you always right. take a piece of the headstock off in the ceiling fan or a car door. or <laughs> <laughs> Right. They also have the Gunslinger, which is a Strat-style body, S-type right. body, so on and so The ASM, yeah. Everybody yeah, they, tries to offer something for everybody, every customer, every type customer, so they can get a piece of the pie one way or the other. Mm -hmm. so here's a, here's a question. Get, uh, Mitch is uh, saying, can't you be, Mitch Heyman is saying, can't you be a Super Strat and a Les Paul guy? Well, yeah. Hello. Sure. I'm, I'm, stuck, <laughs> I'm stuck on chicken guitars. You said for eight grand, it better come with a blow 
Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Come with a certificate for one free. Exactly. <laughs> Or maybe a reach around at least, because <laughs> you're getting oh, screwed. <laughs> yeah, but sadly, it's from James, though. Dave oh, Arnold got that Firebird behind him. There's another one, the Firebird, mm -hmm. the Explorer. But basically, I mean, well, the, then we're, got, as guitar players, we're some we're some picky bastards, aren't we? Oh yeah. yeah. You know what we haven't mentioned yet? The guitar that doesn't have a head and doesn't have a body, like a style. Oh dear lord. Uh, yeah, or, right. Chapman stick. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when you mentioned Firebird, I, I, I'm not a real Firebird fan, and I know Hack's got one, and my bass player had the Firebird bass for the longest time. But I've seen a lot of advancement in Firebird body style, and I'll I'll tell you a couple companies, at least one that I think is very cool. Uh, actually, two. Um, Balaguer is that how I was going to say right? Balaguer. Yep, and uh, Sully. They're, I mean, smaller guitar, more boutique, you know, kind of one off, you know, advance order, you know, custom order, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But those two companies have got some nice kind of curvature, smaller style than a traditional Gibson, uh, but not infringing on the IP and a nice looking mm. guitar. You mm -hmm. can, you can, you can custom, you can fully customize a Balaguer for about 2200 bucks. That's a good price. Yeah. Wow. That's US. That's, uh, of course, that's US. That's almost Mexican price for some other brands or even high end import. And, and you're, you're talking, you're talking, and that's like, that's Mac Daddy and up. That's neck through construction. That's a, that's a, that's a quilt or a, a flame top. That's a burst finish. That's a satin finish. That's a, you know, <clears throat> whatever, whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, build your own. Yeah, you can actually build it on the website. Put your yeah. flight on, put your pickups. Oh, Balaguer, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Beautiful looking. Well, um, Friedman Guitars is really hitting the market hard. Yeah. Yeah, but, but yeah, think, got, about, uh, think about what Friedman's their own thing. doing, though, right? Friedman, Friedman's just doing strats. and Basically, I mean, the core of their line is strats and tellies, right? right. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, you, got, you got to remember, you know, it's not Friedman. It's it's uh, it's Grover Jackson. Grover that's Jackson. The behind right. that. Right. Yeah. Hey, Blackjack, how are you? Blackjack's in here. Well, Friedman does a Les Paul too. Yes. Now they do. Yeah. You know. Yes. Yeah. You know, I here's an original uh, shape. Well, one of the more original shapes in the last, I guess, 10, 15 years is the what? Well, well, the PV Music Man, like the yeah, the Wolfgang you know, shape, Wolfgang. Eddie Van Halen shape. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That but was really, sort of. I mean, uh, it's kind of half and half. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think even Eric said that um, on one of his shows that when it first came out, he was just like, Ugh, what is that? And it sort of had to grow on him. And, at, you know, afterwards, it's just like it's the best ergonomical body that you could. I mean, you know, if you like the guitar, you like the guitar. It's just like Les Paul. If you like it, you like it. You're going to brag on it one way or the other. And the same thing with the Wolfgang. I mean, I. I love it because it fits me as a player, uh, the body, the neck, the whole nine yards. And there, there again, I mean, one of the great, one of the greatest guitar players that's in our generation, as far as that goes, uh, basically specced it out. So, yeah. you, well, if you think you about, can't really argue with that. <laughs> a lot of people don't realize that Eddie played the Les Paul for a long time. I mean, he, you know, his dad, his dad took him and Alex down to the the music shop and bought, you know, Eddie a nice Les Paul and Alex a drum kit, financed it. And uh, that was that was his first real professional, like real professional guitar. And I think it was like six hundred dollars or something for the Les Paul. Ended up pulling the neck pickup out and using the bridge pickup. But you know, he married the. He went into he. I I I mean, I'm not saying Eddie Van Halen is the person who put super strats on on the market, but I, I'm I'm just gonna say he's one of the first. He kind of did. Yeah, yeah. There you go. I didn't, I didn't want to get too over the top. He definitely was one of, if not the. But um, so he took the Les Paul and the Super Strat and merged them. And I think eventually after, you know, Kramer and all these other, all these pieces and all these other things, that's when Wolfgang or after, well, let's go first into Music Man. Um, he took the Les Paul and the Super Strat and, and married him. Yeah. Well, even before that was PV, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. PV. Yeah. But, but then you had, you know, you're, you're talking in the 80s. So, I mean. Well, Music Man first, then PV, then, then, then uh, EV Fender. Had the, you had the Kramers and the and the Jacksons and the Tarbells and and you know you had those guys. Of course, you also had Gibson making super strats and you had uh, str <laughs> Fenders making super strats as well. So yeah, I'm, I mean, more, I'm more like Hack, man. I'm, I'm a, 
Uh, except I'm the I'm the I'm what Hack used to be, because I'm really a Strat Les Paul guy, but a Strat just it fits so well on me, and I'm, I'm I'll admit, man, I'm I'm not a big uh, Wolfgang guy, but that's me, man. I mean, who am I? But well, Strat know. with the belly cut is very comfortable against the rib. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I got a belly now too, so the belly cut's important. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I hear you, Quentin. <laughs> well, you know that's the thing. Like, you, 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 there has to, in order for a guitar to become iconic, right? And why everybody's like so much, you know, Strat, Les Paul, is because of all those iconic players that play them. And and then when you're getting into playing, you're looking at, oh, okay, there's my hero. Oh, what's he playing? Oh, he's playing a Les Paul, or he's playing a Strat. The whole Wolfgang thing, man, that's all Eddie Van Halen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? mm -hmm. But if, if, you don't also, have, if you don't have a uh, like, they didn't have the choice. They didn't have, you know, it was Strat Kelly or Les Paul or, you know, Ted Nugent with the, the Birdland. They didn't the Birdland. have the choice back then. Yeah. But what I'm getting at is like any new style or new design that comes up, if you don't have like an Eddie, Jimmy Page yeah. type iconic player playing it, it's never going to really, I don't, I, it's just me. My, I don't think it's ever really going to take off, you know, there's pepper, the puppy dog. Oh, yeah, down the she's, screen. She's, she's around, you know I'm what fine. I mean? Like you have like <laughs> Friedman guitars. You got, if you don't have like a name person playing a Friedman, it's not going to reach that level. You know, PRS what? has a shitload of signature artists. Every, you know, like how yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, I mean, and they have got some iconic players in there. I mean, Carlos Santana is the first one that pops into my mind anyways. Mark Tremonti. Mark Tremonti for sure. Yeah, yeah Mark Tremonti, you know. Chris but Rob, that's yeah. the thing. You have to have that sort of that that artist that's going to, you know, imprint that image into some kid's head and say that. Yeah, but look, like, look what they've done in, in the last five years. What have they done to – because, you know, who, who the hell gets guitar magazines anymore? So what what do they do? They they, do. Just, they give everything to the most popular YouTube guys. That's what it's turned mm -hmm. into nowadays. Is, is you seeing Kiesel and and uh, Friedman guitars and to uh, you know to the YouTube guys to promo their guitars. Yep. Okay, I gotta yeah. read. Joe Hervey is asking Hack does Slash sell Gibsons? Oh shit, does he sell Gibsons? Yes. He's got like a million yeah, of them. Absolutely. He sells a ton of Gibsons, man. Because he's yeah. he's that he's that iconic guy. Like anybody, you know, yeah, that is well, playing and you know. Lars Guitar makes a good point as well with Ivan is. I mean, you know, um, yeah, you got he. They've got a pretty good stable now. I mean, you know, oh, what I'm yeah. saying they have had for the last what yeah. 15 years or so, 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. Steve yeah. Vai. Yeah, now you got Nita Strauss. Flash Flash's Flash's iconic Les Paul was not a Gibson. No, no, it was, uh, yeah, Rick yeah, it, was Derrick, it was a Rick Derrick uh, ghost built, right? Yeah, Dry Heat's talking about the um, the uh, Wolfgang standard, and that's what one of the things they did is put the belly cut in here. This is Eric Jr.'s one, but the belly cut on the Wolfgang standard. I'm not sure if you can see it. Mm -hmm. Nice and comfortable. This one's happening to be signed by George Lopez, but it's a nice, nice belly cut on it for sure. Very comfortable against the ribs. Yeah, well, they started doing belly cuts on. The thing is, they started doing on some of the last Pauls, like some of the signature models, like the Alex Lifeson one pops into my head first, right? Yep. Right. As yeah. soon as you do a belly cut into Gibson's, like people complain. <laughs> yeah, true. You know what I mean? You can't do any of that. Yeah, you, like, you got to keep a, those traditional. traditional. We're a traditionalist group, man. You don't, you just don't mess with the, the iconic guitar. I mean, it, it's tough, man. It's a, I wouldn't want to be in the business. It's tough. So Braxel is saying that he just bought a Friedman Relic Purple Vintage T and it ranks way up there with the rest of my guitars. Grover Jackson is the man. Oh yeah. No, not yeah, not, they're amazing guitars. Yeah. I'm not, not saying there's anything wrong with a Friedman or a Sir, but it, it's to reach that iconic status, you gotta have like some iconic person playing it. So here here's the issue with with I guess any custom guitar or things like Friedman's and Sirs that are boutique, like Kiesel's and stuff. If you buy that, you're buying it because you're really gelling with that guitar. It's for you. It's the, it's the type thing. So if you get sick of it in two months or whatever, and you try to resell that guitar, it's not going to be like when you bought a Les Paul and you resold it 
a month later for the same price because there's only a limited market for those types of guitars the, sure. the custom stuff i'm saying You're so yeah you can use your shirt <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah you can pay whatever you want on these guitars but but it's who's going to buy it. It's like in the motorcycle industry. Remember the whole chopper craze a few years ago yeah. and everybody started building all these fancy motorcycles and putting all these parts. Now all these guys are sitting around trying to sell these bikes and nobody wants them because everybody's gonna, just going to go to a Harley Davidson dealer and buy a stock bike because that's iconic. That's traditional. And mm -hmm. all these other things that people are customizing, it's for yourself first. That's fine if you do that, but resale value, forget it. You're not going to never going to get that money back. I've never purchased a guitar with uh, resale value in my mind ever. Never, never entered my no. mind. No, but, but, but sometimes is, people get shocked me. by that. This is just me. No, so. I understand that. So I like definitely five, understand yeah. that. And, and I uh -huh. don't do that as well. But I yeah. think if somebody does or buys a guitar and all of a sudden they try to resell it, something oh, happens, I, they hit a hard that. time. And they yeah. say, oh, I paid five grand for this. Why can't I get five grand for it? I can only get 1500 And they start asking that question. But if they had a Gibson, a Fender, you know, something like that, it would be a different story. Hey, quick, like, I, think, I think you and I both come from music retail. That's why you and I at least, and, and Brian too, but as far as the resale value, but we know as working in a music store that the value is not going to be there. So as you leave the store, it's worth 70%, you know? Right. right. And like the guitar I play now is a Mexican Strat. I don't know what Mexican strats go for now. Probably five hundred bucks. Five hundred bucks. You know, I paid one hundred and eighty for mine, wow. and I was lucky. I was lucky to get it, but yeah, the whole the whole resale value thing that just doesn't enter into my mind. And uh, yeah, on the used market, you're like, I don't care what's on the headstock. I don't care what the headstock says. If it's if it feels good in my hands, it's like you know I'll I'll think about it. But yeah, but but also you know, it a Kiesel, you know, if if you spend three thousand dollars on a Kiesel, fuck, dude, you're yep. gonna get you're gonna get a seven A quilt. You're gonna pick everything on that guitar you want. You're gonna get a seven A quilt top. You know what is what would three what would a custom shop Gibson or Fender cost you? Shit. Oh same, yeah, same money. Same well, okay, money. Hey, are you taking Canadian prices or American <laughs> prices? <laughs> But I'm no. not thinking three grand for a Gibson Custom <laughs> Shop. Where the hell's that? Is that weird, man. <laughs> I'm talking metric system pricing. <laughs> no, I mean think about it. You know, you, you, but every everything that you add on a custom guitar is subtractive. Yeah. When it, when it, when it comes to resale, right? And I'm not saying you go into it thinking that, but it is one factor you really should consider when you buy a guitar is, is am I going to take a bath on this? And especially on a new guitar and what kind of bath you're going to take, you go buy a Kiesel or, you know, one of these, one of these real custom shop. Yeah. You, you might have a great, you might have a great guitar, but man, you get sick of it. You're going to, you're looking for a damn needle in a haystack when you try to sell it. Look at guitar, our cars. If you back in the day when you know like Alpine car stereos were big and all those kind of things, I used to install them. You know, so I got a I got a you know a Chevy Impala, you know, an old cop car, and I put in like a ten thousand watt Alpine car stereo. I got you know fuzzy dice hanging from the mirrors, and I, I put in neon lights, and I got subwoofers in the back. The Impalas were seven thousand dollars blue big blue book value value, and I've got twelve thousand dollars in a stereo system. So I take it to the car shop to trade in, and I'm hoping to get you know twenty thousand dollars for this car. <laughs> it's it'd be honestly smarter to go back home, pull all the car stereo stuff out, right. factory one back in, sell your car stereo stuff on on the whatever your your markets are, trade your car in and get close to blue book value for a used car, and sell your other stuff. Like you don't get the extras. No, no. And guitars are the exact same way. Yeah, brass sure. blocks and all the extra. You know, blah blah blah. Pe people, up, up people think people get people get it in their head that, oh i change the pickups out or, or i do this i do that put these tuners on it or, or put that on it then i can just add that into the price of the guitar no it doesn't work that way it might be the sweetening thing to negotiate a deal you know okay i got this and this and this okay that's cool right. you might get a, a fair value but not necessarily more it's just a nice selling advantage hey guys uh, i just want to say hello we got a few more people that popped in my good buddy bruce is in here Hey Bruce, hey, how are you? R2R3 is in here. Oh, nice PGH to see you. Or PGH. 
Uh, Charlie S is asking, how, how do I order merch? Uh, the link is below, Charlie S. Uh, also on my banner, you can hit the Teespring icon, and it'll all come up for you. Uh, PGH Live Jams, new to the community, welcome. <laughs> You're meeting half the community here. <laughs> it's like everybody's here. Not everybody, but a lot of us are in here at the moment. So, And if we're not here, we're in the chat. So there you go. You're meeting everybody in one shot. Brian Van Stewart Elsing, saying, welcome. Yeah, uh, uh, mostly. Too. Okay. Yeah, you're very welcome, PGH Live Jams. Okay, folks, I've been neglecting the chat. I promise I will look a little, I'll, I'll pay more attention to it when, if you tag me. What is this chat thing? A speaking? lot of people want to throw in on this conversation. <laughs> Mike Heath, Mike Heath, Papa Blue, if I would said hello, hello. So, Hack. Uh, yes, sir. Chicken Guitars asked the question earlier Do acoustic guitar makers suffer the same scrutiny that, that uh, electric guitars endure? And I, yes. I can't really comment on that because I'm not an acoustic player. Maybe you guys could have a little more. I, I really wouldn't know. Well, headstock design. I mean, you look at a lot of the the bigger manufacturers, Taylor, uh, Martin, Yamaha is a major contributor with acoustic guitars. Uh, oh, man. I mean, there's, there's so many. There's like a lot of Canadian manufacturers that make really good stuff. Seagull and... Uh, well, Seagull but, makes good stuff for... Lerve, is that, is that what they're pronounced? Um, Lerve, yeah. Yeah. It's, and so yeah. a lot of the headstocks... Well, Seagull did a crazy extreme, like like a, almost like a, uh arrowhead type of a headstock, a teardrop or something. I don't know what you call it. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of it comes down to the rosette styles. Um, I mean, a, a dreadnought and a cutaway. I mean, what's, you know, what's the difference between manufacturer and manufacturer that way? It's That's a tough one. I think maybe a little bit of the headstock design um but i think there's a little bit more uh kind of look the other way when it comes to acoustics well it's like taylor guitars when they first came out everybody was like you know dude it's a bolt on acoustic guitar what the hell and man when you would taylor even sent out a video for us we were a taylor dealer and when people will watch the video they're like you know holy shit dude because because when you adjust the truss rod on a Martin, you you only adjust to like the 14th fret. Because after that, it's glued to the top of the guitar. And mm -hmm. but Taylor just did a whole redesign with that V bracing, which is supposed to be. You know, I, I haven't played them, but it's like you know Taylor came out and just, you know, they were as big as Martin in no time. Mm -hmm. Except in the bluegrass yeah. world, man. If you go to a bluegrass like jam and you don't. There's not a Martin in your guitar case. They're just gonna kick your ass. Yeah, if there's not a Martin or a Collins or something or yeah. something like that, yeah. Then, yeah. When I left music retail, off the stage. when I when I left music retail, there is a guitar manufacturer, and I forget the brand, and this is really embarrassing. It was an acoustic manufacturer, and hopefully it'll come to me before the show's over. Maybe someone in the chat will get it. But they brought out this really cool carbon fiber bracing. That was their claim to fame: carbon fiber bracing under the. Um, uh, yeah, the top set, it sat in the, the top set in the guitar and had a little cage thing around it. Yes, no, it is. A, and I'm, I'm honestly, it's a Canadian company too, and I'm so embarrassed I don't remember the name. Is that, uh, I remember that. Too, yeah. Is it McPherson? No, no, I know McPherson. One of my friends plays that, Steve Cerlacci. That's Rain a whole carbon fiber guitar. Mm -hmm. Is that Rain uh, Shadow? No, no, no. Damn. Okay, I'll, I'm going to Google this. Ovation? <laughs> no, yeah, no, I'm 99.9% sure it was a Canadian company, and we carried him at our, at our store. We we're a PV dealer, a Fender dealer, Yamaha dealer, but it was another company. Go yeah. in? No, not go in either. <laughs> okay, just a few more people popped in here, guys. Brad Miller is with us now. Hey, Brad. Hey, Brad. Brad. Doing, Brad, Steve Hogan, how are you? Gussie's Welcome, in Welcome, everybody. Gussie Wells is here. Hey, Gussie. Brian Stewart. A couple of those names you mentioned are coming up in my search, but that's not them. Damn. 72 people are watching, folks. Thanks, Mitch. Wow. Blasty's here. Hey, Blasty. Yeah, we got 72 people in here. Hey, you guys are great. You guys are awesome. You guys rock, man. You absolutely rock. Yeah, the, the I, like the acoustic thing, I don't know. I, I don't hear as much... Or maybe people just don't get as excited about acoustics and and you know people copying other designs or you don't really hear a lot about that, do you? Eric, was it a rain song? No, I see people are saying that. No, it's, I'm not saying rain song doesn't make them. I'm sure they do, but it's not the brand that we sold. 
I'm going to find it. At least I hope I will. Black yeah, Fred is saying, you. ask for thumbs. Thumbs up, folks. If you're enjoying the show, thumbs up. Hey, there's Crawlbar. <laughs> Ladybug saying, I can't imagine a bluegrass band kicking anyone's ass. <laughs> oh, are you kidding? <laughs> there's Rob 212. Hey, Rob. Some of those guys playing bluegrass, they're fantastic. Oh, man. Players. Yeah. Oh, my oh. God. <laughs> Ooh, buddy. I mean, fantastic players. You yeah. know what? It might have actually been a Martin. Because Mark, yeah. Mark, Martin has um, the carbon fiber bracing on certain models as well, too. And it may have been that because I had one. Um, so I, I thought it was another company. but I, I No, I know what you're talking about. It's another company. Yeah. And I'm not talking to all carbon fiber. I'm just talking just the bracing in the underneath the, the solid right. top guitar. It was a hey, black is in here. Hey, zip fix. So, uh, Quentin, yep. question for you. Um, if somebody wants, like, let's say myself, I'm looking at acoustic guitars, I'm looking at Martin. Is, is some, like, I don't really know the models that well or anything, but something like I hear D28 a lot. Is that like a like a standard for them the d28 is a standard dreadnought like it's it's the iconic martin but okay. um you might look like a d35 is that that's what i would look at because it's got all the nice appointments but, but um, yeah the, d the d35 is is kind of like a les paul custom in, in that yeah sense. yeah and you're okay. so you've got like a D24, D28, D18. Uh, you, then you're getting just like some of your double O's and triple O's. Yeah, a, D, a D28 is like, you know, an American standard or a Les Paul standard. It's, yeah, you can't go wrong. Okay. Oh, no, but a buddy of mine got a, uh, got a D28 from Guitar Center, and like four months later, he had to have a neck reset. And that's mm. some traumatic surgery, man. Yeah. And then they, wow. they 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 covered him on it, but it took him like four months to get it back. And they said, bring it back. We'll just give you another one. But right. Uh, you know, D28, the whole thing about them is the action's high. But that's where all your volume and your boominess come from. Right. OK. You know, the, the more the more like Taylor guitars. The, the biggest complaint about them is they didn't sound like a D28. So Taylor at least to ship them with. A different two different bridges the the other bridge would raise the action up more now it's harder to play you know like major bar chords past the fifth fret but if you wanted that yeah, yeah. Mark down that's where it, that's where it comes from mm. okay. zip fixes uh zip fix guitars is saying is the one you guys are thinking about is it a bread love or breed love no another good brand as well too no but no i've, I've lost it I'll, I'll probably never find it but there's a lot of these people make them which is one particular one we carried and I and I've lost it, so I'll I'll just shut up about it. Jack Daniels <laughs> 10101, how are you? We got a lot of people popping in here. We got 74 people watching. You guys rock. Michael Jack. Nice to see you. Cool, cool. Somebody we didn't, uh, we didn't see Ben tonight. Hey, no. I think he said a lesson or he's taking a lesson or doing a lesson. I don't oh. know. something. Uh, Waleed has got a question here. Everybody, what if Fender released a similar threatening video? Would it have raised the same drama? That's a really good question, Waleed. What do you guys think of that? I think so. I think yeah. I think, I think it would have the yeah. same impact because mm -hmm. they're one of they're one of the uh, the founding fathers of rock and roll guitars as well as Gibson, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. I think so. Yeah. I would agree. And they have several um, subsidiaries under their uh, their umbrella as well too. Chevelle, EVH, you know Jackson, you know that there's they're representing quite a few companies there too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I would yeah, but they don't have. I don't know who would deliver that message. They don't. Do, do they have like a spokes? Each each, each family has each has each family has their own marketing um, key person. Right, but they don't. They don't really. They don't really do. I mean, it, like like Gibson has Mark Agnesi as as their, uh, I guess, online or uh, their 
social media liaison. They don't really have, I don't really, do, do they really have a, a, a like a, a true social media liaison for, for Fender? No, really what they do, and this is kind of cool, is they use artists, whether they be small or big, to kind of deliver the message. And they're really not even saying anything. They're just showing products, and you know, and they're they're kind of the we're we're like you all kind of people, right? Where they're the artist playing a guitar and throw, taking you through an amplifier, and that's you're watching that and experiencing it. But there's no real voice for each of the companies or the entire company. Gotcha, uh, yeah. Crow, Crowbar. We're talking about the uh, the video that Gibson put up with Mark Agnesi uh, talking about buying authentic Gibson. Oh, Bobby Lopez is in here. Bobby, I saw the video of uh, Dave fixing your guitar. Finally saw it. In case anyone doesn't know what I'm talking about, and I'm, is it what's that? Dave's World of Fun stuff. He's a uh, he's got a YouTube channel. He basically does guitar repairs. And Bobby Lopez had his uh, Cherry Les Paul. He reached touch the paint job on it, and uh, looks really good. Great. Oh, Queen Bee is in here. We all got to be Be here, bro. <laughs> I'm already in trouble. So. <laughs> I was waiting for her to pop in the pop, pop in the side of the room there and yell out, Quack! Scare the crap out of her. <laughs> the night's still young, Quinn. That was funny. <laughs> or, or for Nocturnal Butterfly to ban her again. Yeah, oh, right. Right. oh, yeah. There was that, wasn't there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, this is funny. So Showman or Flat Fretz is saying, who thinks Gibson set up Mark Agnese? New guy gets all the heat. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, an right. amazing ritual, right? Hey, you've got an idea for you. Read this. Go on camera. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to keep your job, sit there and read this, <laughs> read this script. It's like us reading names in the chat, right? Nothing could go wrong with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Yeah. <laughs> Can I get a shout out? My name's... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> my name is Michael. I go by Mike. <laughs> you know, Sandra, will, Sandra will text me when we're doing it. You guys know it's like with the, with the first, there's about a 30 second uh, delay from what the audience hears from what we say. So yeah. she'll text me, don't read that guy's name. And I'm, I'm, I'm reading read the guy's name. So blah, 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 blah. Oh, you know, and then I've just had a racial slur. And I'm like, oh, yeah. wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, see, where I got the opposite, I got Quentin egging me on to read everybody I know. and throwing them in there like trying to bait me. Yeah. Hey, you forgot to mention this name. It's like that. I think some of them are Quentin, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, really. Where's Quentin? He's gone. He's back. Like, you don't see Superman and Clark Kent at the same time. You don't, you don't see the control. <laughs> 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 so true, Eric, Eric. I'm still, I'm still on uh, Google trying to find that damn acoustic guitar with the weird vibration. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm imagining it. It's totally imaginary. <laughs> hey, there's Hugh Caldwell. Hey, buddy, welcome. Laura Vay, J. Steen. No, it's not Laura Vay. No, another good one. They, They're they, all trying they, to figure out. <laughs> everybody's probably doing it now because it's a smart thing. Because carbon fiber is not going to give. Uh, the wood will kind of stay fixed with it. So I'm sure every good manufacturer is using it now. I just I just feel bad. I can't remember. We did carry it in our store, and it might have been the Martin, but I don't know. Well, well, if I come around it, I'll share it with all of you guys. All right. Yeah. Hello, James Sover. How are you? Uh, Brad Miller's asking, was it Rain Song? No, no. Sorry. <laughs> it's just gonna keep. Let's get through them. What, what? You got Tacoma back in the day. You had Guild. You had. Um... Guild, Guild made some great guitars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start searching this way. I'm going to start searching for Canadian acoustic guitar manufacturers. I know we just talked about a bunch of them, but instead of forget about the bracing, because I think it was Canadian, and we'll, we'll come back to it if I find it. I'm really yeah. laughing myself right now. Gibson <laughs> makes some uh, good acoustics as far as that goes. The hummingbird, oh, hummingbird. Hummingbird. Yeah. Hummingbirds, like, you know, the creme de la creme. Mm -hmm. And a lot of yeah, and those, those, Montana, those Montana guitars are pretty freaking awesome mm -hmm. yeah the only artist was it dave matthews and then and, and um uh was it michael Dahl? good lord andy key just a bunch of uh acoustic players that play those guitars <laughs> and they're percussive with them i mean it's like a band one man band 
Yeah. Brad Egan, welcome, Brad. He's saying Garrison Guitars had a carbon that's skeleton. It, that's it. Yes. Yes. Who said that? I love you. Brad Egan. That's What's it. Brad Egan. Egan. There you go. Brad Egan won the prize. Thank you. Drove me batshit crazy. <laughs> Brad Egan. Yeah. You, just, you just won Eric's EVH guitar. That's right. Garrison, <laughs> thank you so much. And I don't even really care anymore, but I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, funny. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> St. John's Newfoundland, 1999. Garrison guitars were crafted using innovations using the Griffiths Active Bracing System, a revolutionary method of guitar construction that took over six years to perfect. <laughs> Thank Eric, you. At least you're in good company. <laughs> I, 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 am crazy. I am crazy, but I wasn't crazy on this one. Uh, so <laughs> Jasco Plumbing is saying, Guitar Hack, I just got arrested but managed to get you 250 subs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's worth it, man. Don't drop the soap, buddy. <laughs> hey, Bobby Clipper, how are you, man? Okay, PGH Live Jams has a question for all of us. As someone just starting a channel here, I make original jam tracks. There you go. Do you guys have established subscriber bases? How best to get subscribers added? Not don't do sub for sub. Don't do. I was just gonna say, don't buy them yeah. and don't sub somebody for subbing your channel. What you want to do is really you, you want to participate in groups like this. Channels comment on channels that are doing content, participate in live streams. People will figure out who who you are, you know. And uh, I'll give you a shout out. PGH uh, Live Jams. Go check out the channel. Check him out. If you like what you see, subscribe. That's basically the way to do it. I'll check you out right now. There you go. Gotcha. There, Janice already subbed. There you go. That's the thing, a suggestion too. Like you want to, okay, I already see a guitar in, in his header, which is great. <laughs> Here, here's another thing too, and this is maybe a little tip since we're talking tips. Use, use your channel art effectively as well too. You know, have a nice header. Tell people what you're about. Um, you know, are, are you live three times a week? Put that on there. Say you're live three times a week. What do you do? I do reviews on this or I just play guitar or I sing. I do karaoke. Make it inviting to let people know because people will flip YouTube channels like they flip TV. Mm -hmm. And if they see something boring, they're going to skip and go to the next one. But if you catch them, oh, this is neat, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Use your about section very, very effectively too. Mm -hmm. Throw Looks a promo up there. Yeah, also I would say just 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 wear pants, dude, because the no pants thing is that's mine. Yeah, that's mine. <laughs> pants helps. Pants and, and Eric, Eric, I'm in, I'm in with you, Eric, because I'm I'm like so relieved that somebody found Garrison. I really feel much better. <laughs> well, hey, how about how about EVA charge? Do they count? These count? Can you see them? Oh, <laughs> They're not boxers. That's real shorts. That's striped shorts. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. But pants are a good thing on YouTube. Yep. Well, it's a very nice compliment. Mitch Hamas is saying this show is like the creme de la creme of guitar stars. I don't know about the star part, but thanks oh, for watching, geez. buddy. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's basically it's like, I mean, when people sub me, I automatically, I'll go look at their channel. And it, like it's you're good. saying, Eric, if it's guitar stuff, I'll sub them back. If they don't have any content, what's the point in subbing them back? But if they have content... <clears throat> and it's guitar related stuff then i'll sub them back right the only time i'll sub if it's not guitar context sometimes you might be really surprised like maybe maybe you see somebody who does has a woodworking channel and you really need to learn how to fix something for the wife because she's driving you crazy about it and <laughs> the woodworking <laughs> i even subscribe to a mousetrap channel believe it or not uh, uh just is, because there, is that a hint is that a hint about no. somebody's wife or well, are you asking you're asking for a friend no no, <laughs> no i'll be honest i gotta learn stuff uh, for nocturnal but you know, I, I will check out the channel, and if it's something I'm never going to check out, um, yeah. I will subscribe. Yeah. Another thing I would suggest too, I had this conversation with um, a relatively you know well known YouTuber. He's friends with a lot of us. He's over in, in the UK, and he wanted to do some contests on his channel. And I said one of the things here's like contests can be great and contests can suck, and you know you can use a lot of these things. I've had I've run some successful contests, and I've won some that bit me in the ass so bad that it was like they're you know you give away a guitar, and it's like oh it only comes in blue. You know, um, yeah. but, but you know, another thing you can do, like you can use these <laughs> contests where people can participate 
and you might get a bunch of subscribers all at one time, but they're the people who um, live on social media to enter contests, to win contests, and then they'll take the prize. They're not even guitar players. They'll take the prize and either yeah. sell it or whatever. And you don't want those people subscribing to you because it's going to do several things. You get a bunch of people subscribing because you're giving something away. Um, and then they're, they're going to be gone. They're never going to watch you. And that's going to have a major impact on your analytics. When you start watching that after you've got so many subscribers now, not watching. And then it's like this curve that just goes crazy. Yeah. Um, the, for one that worked well for us when Sandra did it was, um, the 12 days of rock missing. And it was 12 days, you know, we gave away stuff every day for 12 days and every single person that won was a musician in, in some rate. And we're like, wow, thank you. Because you know, it's like when you give somebody something, you want to see, you want to see them happy, right? You want to see them to use it. Sure. Yeah. And, and, um, it was nice. We got to, we celebrated through them, but you know, there's another time where I had like about $3,000 worth of stuff we gave away and the person didn't even know anything about guitar. And it was like, what? It's like, ping, you know, the balloon goes yeah. pff, like this. That's yeah. what it's really depressing. It takes the wind right out of your sail. <clears throat> yeah. On 36 solo, welcome. Okay, everybody's uh, subbing. I usually say this at some point in the show. I might as well say now. So, <clears throat> folks, we got a fantastic uh, community here of people, the people in the panel. Uh, the people that are in the chat right now. So yeah, let's uh, let let's sub each other. I mean, let's keep the community growing. Let's keep it positive. So far, you know, I at least unless <laughs> Nocturnals wiped them out before I've seen them, but I haven't seen anything <laughs> nasty today. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, it's been uh, it's been a, a the type of show I like, which is just fun, free flowing, and enjoyable. So thumbs up to you guys. You guys all rock. And thanks for sure. We got seventy three people in here. It's crazy. You guys all rock. Thanks for, for, for checking out the channel and, and uh, making this always a, a, a fun experience for me. Uh, Bobby Lopez is asking, did I change out the pickups yet on my 2016? Uh, I probably will, Bobby, but it's going to have to be after NAM because uh, that it's going to cost me a bit of money and uh, all <laughs> resources are for NAM right now. Brian, yeah, when, it, good one. when is NAM? Uh, it's like a month from now. July, middle of July. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's the 18th yeah. to the 20th. Yeah. 20, yeah, 20th, 21st, something like that. Uh, we got a, a new guy, Will Valera. He, he said he's new here, can hear some Pink Floyd. <laughs> <laughs> How about Brian Stewart's question about the age? I, I, I'm thinking Quentin and I might have this one topped. Well, actually, no, I think Hack's older than I am. I'm older. I think uh, Quentin's first, and then I'm second in age, I think. I'm 55. Okay, there you go. Angelo J. Ricchetti, you rock, hack. No, you rock, Angelo J. Ricchetti. No, no, you rock. <laughs> I love you, man. <laughs> Sorry, Steve from Boston. Yes, we're stealing that. <laughs> we are. All right. Well, Lee's got a uh, he's got a <laughs> guitar review channel too. So check out Well Lead. Brian Stewart. Hey, Brian. He says, yeah, I'm not old enough to be anyone's dad tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, showman ordered a Harley Benton. There you go. Good for you, buddy. I think some of their um, semi hollow bodies along the PRS style um, are quite nice. <clears throat> yeah. You know, when, it, when I see the reviews of them, and actually uh, um, Shane from In the Blues the last time he was on, I think the first question I asked him is, I go, tell me the truth. Are they good? Because he's got a, a butterscotch telly. And he told me, all right, he says, you know what? These things are good. They're good. They're playable. And I think he even gigs with his. Hmm. So there you go, right? And then um, is it Dr. Rick? Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Rick. Yeah. He got that. It's a Harley Benton, but it's basically like a PRS. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm referring to. And oh my God, that thing sounded great, you know. And these are guys who can really play, right? So, you know, I don't know. But I don't know. Getting them in Canada, I think we can still order them. They still got to come from Toman, though. Yeah, yeah. They, that's the only place we can bring them in from. Yeah. None of yeah. the none of the chains will carry them here. Yeah, you can order them um, in the U.S. If I'm not mistaken, on their website for flat flat shipping fee of like thirty 
35 39 dollars that's crazy like that. good well, that's um, crazy yeah good. that's like a pedal yeah, it's, it's only through toman usa though mm. yeah, oh, okay oh here's a something interesting so jack daniels 10101 is saying i bought a 12 string acoustic harley ben on a whim landed here in australia it was just over two hundred dollars Australian. Australian quality is far better than that price. There you go. Well, that's good. Yeah. You know, we talked earlier about Yamaha guitars. I brought them up, and Quentin will know this. You know, the I think it's the FG series guitars. Like their their entry level guitar here in Canada, we would sell it for one ninety nine all day long. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a very. I think it was an FG one hundred something. It's one hundred series, and I mean, you could take it to the campfire if you were stuck for a gig and you wanted to take it to a gig. Mm -hmm. uh, my God, for two hundred Canadian dollars, beautiful mm -hmm. car. Yeah, I mean, it didn't go all the way up from there, but I was actually Seagull checking out. Is, go ahead, I'm sorry. I was just gonna say the Seagull guitars mm -hmm. always impress the hell out of me for the price. If you come down here to my place, I know we're talking about me and you getting together, and maybe uh, have um, Brian come down with you. Mm -hmm. I'll show, I'll take you to the local, which only a twenty minute drive from us here to the local Gibson dealer, but they're also a Taylor dealer and a Seagull dealer. So mm -hmm. we can have some fun. It's like, the, I mean, when you, I know you guys are used to Cosmo and Long McQuaid up there. There's only going to be about 10 Gibsons, nice Gibsons. Um, but, you know, and there'll be like a, probably 20 Taylors, lots of Seagulls. But we could have some fun at the local music shop. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, cool. we'll figure that out. Now that yeah. we're sort of starting. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have a question. Am I really the only one that's representing tonight? I can go wear a Andrew shirt. It's gonna look. It's, I'm gonna have like some things sticking out here, but it's a little small. Yeah, I I don't have. I don't even have my own shirt. I could go change, but it's not gonna look pretty on me. Mm. We, do have, we do have a hack shirt, though. We do. But uh, talking about the uh, Yamaha guitars, Eric. Um, if you've been watching some of the videos, especially the the Helix Line Six videos and stuff, mm -hmm. a lot of these studio guitarists are playing the new rev series um yamahas in in their videos and these things sound phenomenal and then jason sadites um who has a channel and does a lot of helix content as far as that goes um he has another yamaha that i was checking out the uh pacifica yes the one with the seymour duncans the green uh yep. the greenish one looking one as far as that goes got the humbucker single single you got thing. you want to see one of the coolest pacificas on the planet i'll show you one right now and and that he jason's a yamaha artist which is very very cool but let me grab mm -hmm. this this is the coolest pacifica on the planet yeah love the shorts <laughs> hey jjk house of harleys hey buddy this guitar, the, the luthier who built this that used to work for Yamaha was Rich Lasner. Uh, well, he used to work for Ibanez. He was a guy involved with gems, all that kind of stuff. And if he stayed with Ibanez, this guitar was going to be the successor to the gem. So that there's some big shoes to fill. So the Pacific has been around forever. But this is a 921 series. So you've got oh, Humbucker, Ingve Malmsteen stacked uh, single coil Humbucker in the center. Another DiMarzio Humbucker up here. So all DiMarzios. Uh, license Floyd, uh, Alder Body, Alder and Swamp Ash. I forget which one this one is now. I think I always get it confused. Someone will tell me. Uh, War Moth Neck, Jumbo Frets, uh, 22 Fret. I mean, the thing is just a sh I look at the cutaway, easy access cutaway. Um, the thing is a shred demon. The only thing I didn't like about it is they had to do something different for licensed proprietary things. And even Phil McKnight told me a story on this one time saying that uh, I was kind of bummed because it's not a three millimeter locking nut. Mm -hmm. So, you know, everybody in their neighborhood and, and you know, I got a three millimeter wrench. You're at a gig. Hey buddy, can I borrow your, your three millimeter? Yeah, sure. No problem. This is like some kind of crazy ass metric system as Quentin would say. Um, <laughs> actually, you know what it is? It's the same size as a truss rod. I just tried a truss rod wrench. So whatever that is, your standard truss rod wrench, it's that size. But how many people carry one of those around in their back pocket? Mm. So yeah. Every one of these we'd see come through the music store had like vice grips on it, cranking them to take them off. But this thing shreds. And the Pacifica is still a great uh, a great line for Yamaha. I know the back of the back cutaway on that is reminiscent of that Stevens one on the Nuno. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yep. This was going to be the guitar that was going to be the successor to the gem. And it just didn't happen because he left and went to work for Yamaha. Mm hmm yeah so eric do you remember back in the 90s i guess it would have been early 90s early to mid 90s yamaha was <clears> doing the uh, pacifica still well back then but they were doing the tele style mm -hmm. they still have that one 
Uh, I had one of those. I, Mike that Stern, was, is that right? What's that? Is that Mike Stern? Am I getting that name right? Is that is that the signature artist that had that? Yeah, but no, this was this was way back before then. They were making oh. like affordable Pacificas uh, that were Tele style, and <clears throat> I had one. It was uh, dual humbuckers. And Beautiful guitar. It was oh, it was great because it was like it was a natural natural alder or not natural ash. I don't remember mm. body and and uh, of course it got it grew legs and uh, was liberated from my possession. Oh. Oh man, on thirty six souls asking if it's a kind of a narrow neck. Well, it's it's wide this way, but narrow as an as in a gem or like a um just yeah like a ruler. It's a very very thin this way, but fat this way. If that makes sense, it's a it's a shredder. Yeah, what do you guys think about the, the feel of uh, stainless steel frets? I like all of them. I like I've em. heard good things, man, but I I just I, I I don't know if it's a too hard of a feel. I don't know. I like them a lot on the Sir guitars. They, they're really nice. Yeah. yeah, I got them on my Music Man. Mm -hmm. I had them on that Chapman ML One Pro that I had. Not, I didn't have any any problems with them at all. I had it on the uh, Japanese Wolfgang Special. I don't have that mm -hmm. one anymore, but it was nice. Um, the only thing I don't like about it because I don't have the tools to do the work on stainless steel frets. I have regular frets, sure. Um, so I never wanted to monkey with the stainless steel frets if I needed to do a fret job on it, whatever. And yeah. I, would, I would take it to the guy. Sorry, Rock and Roll Guitar Lounge. How are you, man? And somebody else. Ivan Carter, if I haven't said hello, hello. I just want to make sure I'm catching everybody. Yes. Mark Taylor, the legend, is in the house. Mark Taylor's here. Okay, see, I would have missed Mark. Blackjack's here. Yeah, a couple. A couple Blackjack, yeah. Stainless steel is really hard on your tools. Yeah. I mean, you can use regular tools to do it, man, but you're gonna you're gonna burn through them so fast uh, on stainless. <clears throat> so here's a question from Brian Stewart for everyone: guitar you own that you could never part with, sell them all. This one stays. Oh, I'll show one in a second. <clears throat> That's an easy one for me. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody, uh, anybody. Uh, no, that's a total shock, Dave. Never in a hundred years. <laughs> How's the neck on that guitar, Dave? Is that is that a thick neck on those ones, the customs? So it's uh, it's thin down here, but you can see it gets some it gets some girth on up the neck. And and how much does that guitar weigh? Oh, this one's it's it's heavy, man. It's like eleven and a half pounds. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, that's a heavy one. It's a seventies, man. It's a nineteen seventy-four, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, didn't you get the memo, Dave? All Liz Pauls from the seventies are shit. Yeah, I heard something <laughs> about that. <laughs> I just did a show the other night on this one here. This is the, the first of PV Wolfgang into Canada, nineteen ninety-seven. Uh, patent pending before it was even, you know, patent was issued on it. You can see the patent pending on the headstock. People often mistake the uh, the fingerboard as roasted maple, uh, but it's not. It's just, it's beer, you know, all kinds of blood and guts and other kinds of <laughs> fluids and all that kind of stuff on there. <laughs> nice bird's eye on that neck, though. It I is like a nice bird's eye. Look at that on the back, right? That's, yeah, that's yeah, I saw that. I was and like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> different appointments in the back, brass, noiseless springs, that kind of stuff. But, uh, this thing has been through hell and back, uh, toured for, across Canada, United States, and and just it sings, it just sings. It's sharp. Yeah, show the show the back of the headstock where the locking nut is. They didn't they didn't do that drill through the neck thing with the two no. screws. No, they didn't. It's it's uh, it's top mount, and I, I'm I, I argue back and forth about that. I have several guitars that have reverse re rear mount. I actually like that in some ways because it's better pressure on the nut. Now, also, the argument is it's also weakening the neck joint. I've never had one break, knock on wood. Um, but, yeah, so it doesn't have the rear mount. Yeah, I thought the argument was, you know, there's just not the pressure on there to have to drill two holes with the damn neck. You yeah, know? yeah. Top mount is easier, I think. Yep. Very cool. I'd have to say, you know, a guitar I'd never sell was my 81 Les Paul Custom. But it's either that or the mortgage, so. Yeah, you, know, you got to do that. <laughs> Being an adult sucks. It yeah. does. I'm done adulting for the day. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got there, Brian? Right. 
Well, the the this are, is you kids, are you kids watching? This Don't go around. Right. Okay, I'm exactly. studying Brian. Okay, go ahead, Brian. Oh, there it is. R9. You're all pixelated. It's, I don't know. You're moving. Is it's it? Oh, You're well, like the Flash. It's like Android. <laughs> <laughs> that's my internet connection, folks. Yeah. No, you can... I, I spent all my money on the R9. I can't afford an internet connection. <laughs> get out Get out there and feed those gerbils. Tell them to run faster. Come on, man. <laughs> I'll be right back. i got to take these two hounds out. All right. No worries. Uh, what about you, Jason? Okay, I'm presenting you. <coughs> be my uh, SG. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. That's this thing, I, I have to, like I said, everybody, I've said it on a couple of shows. I have to make myself not play this because <laughs> otherwise I won't play anything else. I, I, I've really, really bonded with this one. The neck, neck's no. good. Um, the sound is just amazing for me as far as the, the 61s. Brian's got the exact same guitar as far as that goes. Yeah. Um, it just, it, it's got the locking tuners, the whole nine yard. I mean, it just plays, plays like butter. Sounds good. It looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's got a, not really, it's got a really nice wood grain. Yeah. You uh, can see it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right. Yeah. I don't know for me. I don't know. It's tough, man. I, you know, it'll probably end up being blacky. That's what I was going to say. I figured it'd be black for sure. Mm -hmm. It'll be blacky. We know. It'll be blacky. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Sylvester's saying blacky, blacky. You know, a funny question. I think I've heard Hack talk about this before, but do you guys, I know I do personally, but do you guys name your guitars after anything? Like, oh, Hack does with blacky, but. Um, I don't. Just my I, strap. Oh, my God. Just my I name. I name my Les Paul Brown Sugar. That's cool. I like it. <laughs> Every single one of mine you see on the case is like my R9 is, is yeah, my R9 is called Serenity. Yeah, that's a good name for that one. I that's, that's what I feel every time I play it. Sandra, Sandra's nickname used to be um, Ruby Roo for Scooby Doo, right? So every <laughs> one of my guitars, uh, the, right. that's how would you know the road crew that we'd, we'd go with, they'd see which guitars they'd bring with us. Be tape on the side, it would say Black Roo, which this one is. I've got Tiger Roo, Cartoon Roo, uh, uh, Zebra Roo, which was uh -huh. be a strike guitar. Everything was something something Roo. Uh, oh, double double roux for my double neck. I had uh, no. It was called double roux. It was a French pronunciation. Double roux. Um, a few other things like that, but they're all named after her. So yeah, she she rules. Nice. That's nice. cool. Hard to hard to. I would have I would have to name my strat the Invader. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's another good question from Hugh Caldwell. He's asking uh, the best bargain we ever got. Oh, that I guitar I just sold out 180 bucks off of Craigslist. There you go. Mm -hmm. Although it may be a little warm, I'm not, I can't verify that. But You want me to share a story of a good deal? Yeah. Go ahead, sure. Quentin knows this story because Quentin was on Sandra's show. I told him this. So my bass player, former bass player, he used to run a pawn shop, and this was a great thing. It was a beautiful thing. Uh, so everyone that goes to pawn shops, I'm sure you know this, you know, let's say you bring something in, you want to sell them. So you give it to them and, uh, you know, they pawn it, whatever. They have to put it or sell it. They have to give it like a 30 day check, make sure it's not stolen, all that kind of stuff. Or if you get a loan on something, so let's say it's a thousand dollar guitar, they usually give you 10% of the value. So they'll give you a hundred dollars as a loan and you have so much time to come back in and pay that loan off. And if you're late and delinquent on it, they still give you an extension. So that's that safety thing to get it. And then after you've, uh, kind of gone past your extension you don't show up that product now is for uh, property of the pawn shop to sell i had a usa pv wolfgang special which would back in the day so usa made and not like this one it's a flat top of this version um but he told me that there's one in the shop and, it, and the guy's probably going to go defunct on his loan and i'm like oh yes and i'm like I'm, i didn't want to miss uh, kind of wish misfortune on someone else you know but i was kind of like oh i hope this guy doesn't make his payment and, uh, and, he, and he was coming up for his loan to, to pay it off, and he actually did extend it. So he extended it by a week, and then his, his extension after that, he didn't make it. And he was about, he had one more day to get to make the payment. I felt like putting a little detour signs like road closed up on the street so you couldn't get to the launch. <laughs> and he calls me and says, Wolfgang's here. You want it? I said, how much? $80. Oh, oh wow. God. We still have it. $80. It's been painted several times. 80 bucks for a $1,600. Um, oh, you know, yeah, so there you go. That's a good deal with, with the molded case that you couldn't buy the case for two hundred. Wow. Yep. Yeah, top awesome. 
<laughs> you, only kept, you know you know how Van Halen got David Lee Roth because David Lee Roth had a, um, uh, yeah, a, a PA? PA. <laughs> we had the bass player that had a pawn shop. <laughs> there you go. That's how Hack gets in a band all the time. He's, he owns a PA. <laughs> <laughs> I own the PA, I own the van. He owns the van. He has to pick everybody up. Yeah, well, yeah, I kind of do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear Lord. Oh, dear Lord. Yeah. Oh, dear Lord. I don't know, like, crazy-ass good deals. Like, I say Blackie was a really good deal. Oh, shit, and that Firebird bird was a really good deal. Because if I walk in now and I try and buy that Firebird, it's over $2,000, and I paid 1300 bucks for it. And uh, block yeah, that's pretty good deal. for about thirteen hundred bucks, and mm. and now I could probably put that on Kijiji for like two grand. So if you guys I like that, if you play it, you gotta. If the stage is too small, you can't play it because you'll wipe out half the band. <laughs> no, I, you know what? It's true. I got we, I got a gig coming coming up on Saturday, and it's and, and it's a place that I already know. So first thing pops into my head is like, do I have room? <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, that's got to be a blocky night. That's not going to be a. There's a guitar at my local shop that I told you guys about the Gibson dealer. It's a 2018 used Explorer. And I saw this thing sitting there in like a natural finish. I'm not even sure what they call the finish of it. Mm -hmm. And it was $12.99 Canadian. Yeah. That was a very, very fair price. Um, wow. And I, I picked it up a couple times. I'm like, oh, my God. I, I actually, I, I think it will probably still be there just for some odd reason. So if you guys come down, we'll have a look at that one. It's, it it's have old hardware? Uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah. Okay, because... <laughs> Uh, I know the story. No, no, uh, it's not that. No, this is this is legit because my brother got a natural the guitar. He described an explorer with a natural finish, and his came with gold hardware. I'll get a picture of it from the guy, so I'll text him or I'll Facebook him and ask him to send me a picture because it, it may even. I don't think so, though. I don't think so. I don't yeah. Because they probably yeah, would have. Couple so my, I think they've my, got both of them. My best deal was I bought a. Uh, and this kind of runs into two runs over two guitars, but I bought a uh, I bought a, a an Epiphone Les Paul on uh, Stupid Deal of the Day. Uh, if you guys are familiar with musician yep. friend, and uh, it was I think I paid like two seventy five for it, and uh, nice. Like, like a couple of years later, I I took it in the Guitar Center, and because uh, they had a uh, they had the well the the 2010 SG, the red SG that I have, uh, they, they had just gotten it. It had just gotten off police hold. So I took it in to trade in and, and they give me, they give me three fifty for it. Mm. Ah, there it is. Oh, Good <laughs> Lord. Good one, Queen. Scared the shit out of me. Oh, uh, out of me. The so I, hey, come say hello. I did. Hang on. Let me, uh, there, no, you're on. I'm on what? The, uh, what? You're live. B. You're live. 64 people watching you. <laughs> <laughs> and she's gone. I saw, I saw a little, little pepper right out behind her. Yeah. <laughs> Brian Stewart just pooped himself. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And, and then I traded it in, got 350 on the trade in for uh, towards my. SG and then plus 10% off it. So right now uh, it, it ended up pretty good. I mean, I paid less than uh, I paid about six or about 700 for the SG when it was all said and done. So I felt like it's pretty, pretty good deal. Yes, Brian, she has pipes. I hear them a lot. Yes. <laughs> Actually, there's a, <clears throat> Somebody had a really interesting question here. Oh, it's Waleed. Does the name you give to your guitar affect the tone? Oh, sure. Oh, to yeah, tone names. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tone names. Tone names. Yeah. <laughs> My, we'll, we'll call this one Black Root. It's a very dark tone. Yeah, dark. Very, very dark. Mm -hmm. You don't have to deal with the tone oysters, though. I don't see inlays on that thing. So no, no tone oysters. No. No clams here. <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, now, Hack, you, you should be wanting the uh, Explorer if it had gold hardware because it does have tone gold hardware. Oh, yeah, it's brighter. Exactly. <laughs> it's a richer, no, it's tone. A richer tone. It's a richer tone. Get it right, not brighter. Richer. Richer. Yes, it's richer. Sorry. Yeah. I actually had someone tell me one time 
that the uh, a certain particular person didn't want a black Floyd Rose. They wanted a a, a, a plain chrome one, unplated, un whatever, because it made it a better tone and let the the Floyd breathe. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait for that. Oh, oh dear. Okay. Hey, speaking of Floyd, I put a Floyd um on my standard. Changed out the Floyd Yeah, you did a good standard. job on that. Did you did you snip off the the tuner or no? No, I couldn't get it done, but I did flatten it out, so it okay. does help tremendously. You might be able to see it. Oh, you did a great job on it. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah. That one's flattened out back there towards the back. I don't know if you can oh, see yeah. it or not. But yeah, and I got the DR Black Beauties on it, so it really pops cool. on that maple neck. Oh, and this is something on on this neck. Um, Nesdal, Dave Nesdal. Some of you guys watched him. Look at the flame on the back of that standard neck. That is that's very rare on a standard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have none on the one I just showed a while ago. Mm -hmm. If uh, Gary Holt's still here too, um, yeah. I can uh, Floyd sit here right now. He would know this story. This one here. It's, uh, we talk about Black Floyd. This one's given to me by Gary Kramer at his house. Yeah, R2 helped me uh, do that. We did an offline hangout, and he basically I had everything set up, and he walked what me through it. What the? <laughs> Just want to say hello a uh, few more people. Jerry W., thank you for the nice words. Appreciate it. Uh, Aaron Songs is here. Hey, Aaron Songs. Aaron Songs went live yesterday, folks. Check out Aaron Songs' channel. He is now doing live streams. Right on. Yeah, Dave cool. and I were there last night. Aaron's a great player, guys. Yeah, he's a really good player, yeah. John's Tropical Reflections, welcome. You got a lot of new names in here. T player, Blackjack, I think. Saw some up in the chat. Okay. Yeah. Have a good one, Blackjack. Later, Blackjack. Yeah, cool, cool. Sorry, my back is killing me, but in about a half an hour, I'm not going to care. <laughs> 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 okay, so Quinn's gonna be out for the night. Yeah. Don't, get, don't get old, kids. It's a trap. I'm telling you. Yeah, like my old man used to say, "Getting old ain't for sissies." That's right. I like <laughs> that. I like that. Uh, Hugh Caldwell's got a question for us. What are your influences regarding guitarists? Hmm. Richard Benson. <laughs> 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 Google it. Google okay. it. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Type it into YouTube, man. It's pretty. It's pretty bad. I apologize. <laughs> but you, you, you just gotta look up though after the fact. Is go watch TVT covering Richard Benson. Richard Benson. Richard Benson. Richard oh, Benson. I haven't seen that. Oh God. <laughs> oh, Richard wait a minute. Benson, that guy. That guy? Yeah. Brrr, but in Italy? nothing. It's a guy in Italy. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, I, 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 okay, I, yeah, I know that. what you're talking about. Yeah, I know who it is now. My biggest yeah. influence. I studied him greatly. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's a sad, sad story there, man. If you, there's a there's a, a a movie on YouTube about that guy. Watch that, Eric. It'll give you a whole different perspective. Oh, I know, you. I know. Yeah, yeah, it's a sad situation, man. Really? Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I'd have to say um, my, my my biggest influence is on, on guitar. I mean, what really wanted me to, to start playing was I went to see Foghat and the Outlaws. And I thought the Outlaws were just so cool. But I'd say, you know, Angus, um, Ted Nugent, and of course, you know, Eddie and George Lynch. And then probably this modern day or halfway modern day would be Nuno, man. Nuno's still my favorite. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm an Ace Frehley, Ace Frehley, Tony Iommi for me. Those were the two that got me into to being interested in music. And Tony Iommi, I like him a lot because he's kind of a, a riff master. Like he writes the best riffs, like to me anyway, that I've that I've heard. Dave? Yeah, well, that, I don't think it's any big mystery. It was Mick Mars. So... You know, he's a great blues ball. player, Mick Mars. Mm -hmm. yeah, he was actually. Yeah, he didn't get credit for it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna take a wild stab, and I'm gonna guess Eric's. I'm gonna say. <laughs> You'll never get it. 
<laughs> Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> and there's a funny story that goes along with that. It actually wasn't Bruce Springsteen, but I, I posted this on Facebook. So a couple of you guys are my friends on Facebook. But half of you, every, actually, everybody here is my friend on Facebook. Um, I posted a story of my dad before he passed away. He had dementia. And he knew how much I loved Eddie Van Halen, but he he confused Eddie Van Halen with Bruce Springsteen, and he would um see he cut out these newspaper articles all the time, and it would be Bruce Springsteen. He'd call me up, hey, hey Eric, I got another article on your on your guy Eddie Van Halen, whatever, and I get, I was like, Dad, that's that's Bruce Springsteen. They're not they're not even the same person, not even the same league. And right. okay, and then so I would I would say, and I would I feel bad, right? So after about the nine hundredth time, and my dad, I would just start accepting it and saying, you know, um. You know, okay, thank you, Dad. You know, so I ended up with the world's largest collection of Bruce Springsteen uh, articles. But before, long before Eddie Van Halen, even it was Ace Frehley first. Mm -hmm. Second, I think I'd put it in that line would be um, Angus Young from ACDC. I was I was obsessed with him for a while, mm -hmm. and then Eddie. Then I graduated to Steve Vai and and Satriani, and even put Eddie down for a little while. Like I mean, I mean, not stop listening for a little bit. Was down that rabbit hole, but Ace, Angus Young, Eddie Van Halen. I thought Bruce Springsteen because didn't Bruce cut the sleeves off his shirts all the time? Don't even go there. Don't talk about the No, he did. No, he did. You've been waiting all night to talk about the guy with no sleeves. The guy with no sleeves. Nocturnal just fell out of her chair on the floor. She's laughing her ass There we go. Oh, you did. Let's talk some presets. <laughs> what about you, Jason? Um, I guess it'd be almost like twofold because I really got into the Satriani vibe, vibe as far as that goes when they came out. That just blew my mind. I went back and uh, listened to Eddie Van Halen and Jimmy Page and, and different people of that genre as far as that goes um later it's, um but also about the same time i was listening to satriani and Vi, i got hooked on the the buddy guys bb B. king's stevie ray vaughn's mm. uh, eric clapton's and i got i got really um embedded in that as far as that goes the, you know the bluesy part of it because a lot of those players i've then noticed satriani's device and stuff like that they were playing if you will, souped up blues licks. Um, yeah. So I was like, okay, well, let me go back and, you know, uh, <laughs> listen to some of these, learn some of these licks and so on and so forth. And I, I like to play personally, I'm mediocre at best as far as a guitar player, but I like to play basically just by feel. I mean, you know, I don't know much theory. I don't know whatever. I've just played long enough on the fretboard to know what were what sounds good <laughs> if you understand what i'm saying Feels a big I part of the same man. thing man <laughs> mm -hmm. so i mean that's 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 me as far as that goes yeah yeah i for me it's it's ace really has got to be to this day man it's like when i'm playing a last paul and i'm bending a note i'm trying to get that ace mm. and that over bend and that vibrato you know one thing i'll say about ace Look at some of these guys, uh, some super talented people out there, like the John Fives of the world. I uh, will even say Nuno. Um, all, I mean, and the list goes on and on and on and on. Ace, Ace Frehley has one of the most limited vocabularies of guitar in the world, and that's not a, a slight to him. It's not a slam. Oh, I know exactly what you yeah. mean. Yeah. It's, a, it's, like, it, it's like a couple pages of a book, where right. some of these guitar players have you know, you know, volumes of books. Mm -hmm. But these multiple talented guys and girls that have these volumes of knowledge, when they try to play your simple, you know, shock me or, you know, and the simplest Ace Frehley licks, they can't do it because they're so used to doing this complex passage and pattern and thinking that they just can't do it. And you watch Ace Frehley do it like, you know, he's doing like when he'll, he'll have a backup band or his band or whatever. You watch these live YouTube videos. You're like, that's Ace. I mean, no one can do Ace like Ace. Yeah. 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 I, I, like. For me, it's Ace, and then and then after that, it's like Jimmy Page is another big one. Tony Iommi is another big one, and then there's all these players that I love. But I just, you know, and then there's like what you what you play. Like I, I mean, I love Stevie Ray Vaughan to death, but I can't play that stuff at all. I don't have a feel for it. I love I love Eddie Van Halen, but I can't play that stuff. I just can't do it. I physically can't do yeah. it. So, you know, there's the stuff that you like, and then there's 
that you like and kind of is within reach. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And for me, Ace is in, within reach and, well, Jimmy Page pieces. <laughs> you know, oh. Alex, Alex Lifeson's another big one for me, but again, not within reach. You know? I'll be honest, even though Ace Frehley was an influence to me at like my first, I can't play a Kiss song and play an Ace Frehley solo and I'll be the first person to admit it. I'm not ashamed to say it and do it justice. Oh. Because I'm I, I I can't feel it. I can't feel it the way he does. Yeah. So I, I I'm I'm not embarrassed to say it. I can't. Well, I could say the same thing about like Stevie Ray Vaughan. I can't yeah. I can play the licks, but it won't sound anything like it. Yeah, I just can't. So yeah. <clears throat> Krillbar had an interesting question. Yeah. Desert Island you're stuck on a desert island with a guitarist, living or dead, or mm -hmm. undead. Uh who would it be? And he goes on to say, as much as I'd like, as much as I like Eddie Van Halen, it would pr I'd probably punch him after about 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, um, go ahead. Well, if I asked Nocturnal Butterfly for permission, I'd say Nita Strauss. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's a smart answer. <laughs> that is a smart answer, but. Yeah. Uh, I. It wouldn't be Ace Frilly. <laughs> no. It wouldn't be Ace Frilly. I don't know. I mean, basically, who would you like to hang out with? Joe Bonamassa. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's a nice guy, man. I don't know. I'm thinking so, more Nuno. My, Nuno. My, I don't think anybody's going to be super shocked. Mine is, mine is Randy Rhodes. Oh, sure. Yeah. And the, re the reason why... It would be Randy Rhodes is because the guy was a hell of a teacher. Yeah. He was he was just as just as a prolific of a teacher as he was, he was he was that big of a student. And I mean to me that's just kind of I don't know. That's just kind of the, the 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 real deal there, right? I think no one would want to be with Ace Frehley because the stories he's going to have to tell you. You'd have to listen to Ace Frehley for seven years. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Eric. I couldn't stand the guy. I couldn't stand Ace Frehley's laugh, man. I'd punch him. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's the thing. That's the thing. He'd be like, oh, my God, I'm here with Ace. Okay, you're for the first hour. Oh, yes, I'm here with Ace Frehley. In 14 days, Wilson, I'm here with Ace Frehley. You know what I mean? <laughs> Archie wants to have donuts with Dean Bay. <laughs> There you go. Right. Yeah, somebody said uh, dime bag. What about you, uh, Quentin? Oh, it'd be Nuno. Nuno? But, or, but, Nancy, or Nancy Wilson from Heart. Oh, God. <laughs> Nancy Wilson from Heart? Yeah. I, I always liked Ann Wilson from Heart. Well, Nancy could at least play the guitar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I won't say it. Oh, yeah, yeah well. And Taurus <laughs> here. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather just trade in a guitar player for Dave Chappelle. <laughs> Dave Chappelle. Right? Well, we need we need Who do you want to hang out with, Jason? Uh, probably B.B. King. Oh, that'd be I think, cool. Yeah, okay. I, think, I think he'd have a lot of stories to tell and, and a lot of things to teach. That's good. Answer. You sure as hell ain't got a learning chords from him, that's for sure. <laughs> mm. <laughs> my brother will be on point though yep. yeah. <laughs> oh, okay can i trade back dave Chappelle for paul gilbert paul, there oh you go. yeah paul gilbert okay, I, I want to trade i want to trade we can we can actually trade we have cards so i'm trading i'm trading a dave Chappelle. <laughs> although uh, paul's pretty funny too though but yeah i'll, I'll, right. I'll, I'll trade if, if we're doing trading then i'm going to trade nuno for Lewis the Tone King, because he's got all the fucking gear, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll trade you two Steve from Boston's for... <laughs> I'll trade you one Steve Terryberry. Terry <laughs> oh, Brad, uh, Brad Egan says Warren Hayes. Haynes, yeah. That, yeah. He's a phenomenal Warren guitarist Haynes, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Man, whew. Kenny Wayne Shepherd's no slouch. Either. Very good. I I met him backstage when he opened up for the uh, Almond Brothers. Okay. They did the Halen tour too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. A couple times. Yeah. Jack Daniels uh, one hundred one hundred one says Bonamassa has a good selection of gear too. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, he's, yeah, he's got the selection of gear. I met <laughs> Tom Schultz uh, as well from Boston. You met him? Yep. Nice. Mm -hmm. Awesome. You I know, like in a, in a I, met, so I, was just I got to hang out. We were hanging out with Ted Nugent for probably a half hour. Actually, <laughs> Ted had opened for Kiss. Yeah. And uh, I got to meet uh, Ted and Derek St. Holmes. The whole band came up to this club where some friends of mine were playing. And uh, we were back in the dressing room at, at break, and they said, hey, man, go go ask Ted if he wants to get up and play. So there's Quentin James walking through the club up to Ted Nugent. Hey, man, the band wants to know if you want to get up and play. He's like, well, let me go back and talk to him. We sat back there for a half an hour, and Ted Nugent is the funniest, nicest, most personable guy. He's like, yeah, we'll get up and play. As we're walking out, he, he hands his coat to this girl he was with, and then he pulls out, I shit you not, a chrome 45 out of the back of his pants and hands it to the girl. And they get up and play for probably an hour and a half. Uh -oh. The whole band, the whole Ted Nugent band, Derek St. Holmes and Ted Nugent. And I was like, it was crazy. That's wild. One of the best things I've seen on YouTube was this kid. It's it, The clip is there if you, want, if you want to look for it. This kid hands uh, Nugent a Les Paul. And he, to try it to tell him if it's any good. So there's Ted Nugent with a Les Paul plugged into like a little combo amp, and he just starts playing. And holy shit, the stuff that was coming out of this guy, unbelievable, man. The best rock riffs, the best feel, the best grooves. It's like, oh my God. It's like you tapped into like this fountain of music, man. There's a lot of kids out there like that that have this talent that you just don't know where they come from. Dude, remember the Foo Fighters video where this guy got up and played? That was awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. That guy was, you know, it wasn't a shredding thing, but he just, he knew the song, and he was badass, man. Dave Grohl was freaking out. Yeah. Who's that? Who's that, Eric? That's Eric Jr. Les Paul Kramer. Spe speaking, of, speaking of cool stuff like that, that that's <coughs> quite a few YouTube videos where, like, uh, Green Day. Green Day, yeah. They'll they'll do that with fans. They'll bring them up on stage and and uh, have the fans actually play the play the instruments for the song. I think that's pretty 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 cool thing. Steel Panthers done that a few times. Yeah, well, actually, one of my buddies actually got in got on stage and actually played with them, which and was kind of wowed the uh, the band. Yeah, Cameron that's, Cooper uh, yeah, got up I mean. there and played with them. That's what I mean, Cameron. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Seth, great, Seth, man. Yes. Cameron. Yeah, his tone and phrasings, it's spot on, man. Yeah, yeah but you never see the videos of, of the guys that get up there and don't know how to play the songs. <laughs> I know. <laughs> They're probably deleted. Yeah. Well, you didn't see my video? I was I was up there for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I was just kidding. So guys, it's like uh 849. This is going up to two hours. You uh how are you guys doing for time? You I was getting ready to hop out to be honest with you, but I mean we, well, how about we wrap it up 10 minutes, another 10 minutes? Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably pretty good for me because I'm the daddy's a little high right now. <laughs> <laughs> I might have a pool overflowing because the hose is still running out there, too. Oh, jeez. Right. If one starts foaming at the mouth, we'll <laughs> shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start doing the lean thing, man. I'm about ready to go. <laughs> all right okay so we'll, we'll wrap it up at nine so if anyone's got any last uh minute questions or things they want to uh pop into the chat please tag myself uh or actually any i think everybody's in the chat and uh and we'll answer those uh those questions i do want to say this i mean i'm just some idiot from kentucky and i'm sitting here talking to guys that are in fucking Canada, I don't know where you are, but you guys are the coolest boys. I love you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great, yeah. man. Like, this is fucking awesome. I love you, cats. Yeah, the, 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 the pills are working. The pills, the pills are working. <laughs> pills are working. Okay. <laughs> Brian Stewart is saying, "Why wouldn't Gibson be all the way over having everyone and their copy their designs after all these years? Like Apple wouldn't Tesla." Oh, I see what he's saying. So basically, why wouldn't they do what they're doing? They have a point. Wait, what was your question again? Uh, Brian Stewart, I th I'm trying to make sense. So I think what he's saying is, why wouldn't Gibson release a video like they did? It's like what we've talked about at the beginning. 
because like any other company would do the same, like Apple or Tesla yeah. would do the same. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Protecting intellectual property. Yeah, I think it. I don't think it was a message. I think it was more people got upset. Hey, John and Mike. There he is. <laughs> oh my god! Trying to get to our skiff to get in the house. Oh hey, my god! It's the Wota dude. Wota, <laughs> what's up, brother? Wota. <laughs> Guitarist has a good question. <laughs> okay, hang on. Yeah. How many uh, times did guitar actually help you get lucky? Uh, that's why I started playing guitar. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Thank you a lot. <laughs> a lot. Thank you a lot. <laughs> I have I have two interview answers. When we used to do the band thing, I would have two interviews. It'd be like, okay, okay, which one am I going to give today? Oh, tell us what you why you got into guitar. Oh, the guitar spoke to me. I connected with it on these levels. It was just it was a passion and a dream. No, I, I saw my friend walking down the hall with a girl on each arm like this, and he was a guitar player. Yeah. Like, that's it. <laughs> I just wanted to get the second bass, man. That's why I started. That's it. Yeah. I'll, I'll get cool. away. How about what if I say I'm still waiting? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll share very quickly just because we're going to wrap up. That's how Nocturnal Butterfly and I actually got hooked up. Um, we were playing in our band. We, were, we went through so many different phases where we were an original band with some covers, covers with originals, that kind of stuff. And we were playing Nickelback of all things, right? Mm -hmm. And so she came to this bar one time. We'd met each other on a school bus years ago. And in yeah. fact, like, when we were little kids, fast forward many years into the future, my band's playing this bar. She's watching me run around, set everything up. I was kind of the sound man and everything else at the time. And we're about to go into Never Again by Nickelback, which actually, by all standards, is still one of their good songs. It's a, actually, it's a good song. Don't, don't you shake your head at me, mister. Uh, anyway. <laughs> I'm just no, kidding. you can see that. No. Yeah. no, I can see it. I can, I can feel your head really shaking. No. <laughs> so we're playing. And, and Sandra's like, okay, great. Here comes another band going to ruin the chat or whatever. And then later on, she'll, she'll tell the story probably a little differently. But she calls the bar and said, who the hell was that band that was playing there last week, whatever? And then she on the internet, whatever, and uh, you know, ringing my number, and and then the rest is history. So there you go. So it's, she'll probably tell another story, but that's a story. There you go. All things. <laughs> Speaking of nocturnal, you guys in the chat, um, if you're not subscribed to her, subscribe to her channel. She has some really cool content, live shows during the day, yeah. while most people are at work. But some people plus. get to watch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Eighteen yeah. plus. Channel's growing fast. Man. Yeah. I, I live for Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> it definitely makes my day go by much better when I yeah. listen listening to you guys. So I like it. Like it's it's out of there. And, and most of the shows, you have to watch it live because she deletes it after we're done. Yeah. It's like, dude, that's, yeah. that's yeah, your fault, yeah, though. Good. That's because of Quentin. You guys must have done something really bad the last one because I looked for it and it was gone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's because of Quentin. It's, it's hey, right. No, no. It's, two words, dude, and I didn't come up with it. Two Mangy words. Mangy Cooter. <laughs> Mangy Cooter. Me. Mangy Cooter. Mangy Cooter. I wasn't Quentin James. Uh, <laughs> no. No. They have a shorter right. lifespan than the Gibson video. I say Quentin James. <laughs> the likes when I talk it and talk to him at the, about myself in third person. <laughs> that sounds yeah. a little bit more like ladybug terminology. <laughs> that was ladybug. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I like it for the sole fact that I can vent because on my show I'm always like, hey, hey, you know, and, oh, yeah. and, I'm, and I'm over here I can say, fuck. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's the first time I heard Eric <laughs> drop the F bomb. I was like, hey. <laughs> oh, I've dropped it already a couple of times. That's okay, good. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to swear on your show. <laughs> no, I'm really sorry. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh, all my sponsors are put. What what sponsors? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I think I just lost one too. Yeah, yeah. No, you're fine. You're fine. Oh man, my tender ears. Yeah, yeah. Hey. No, those are good, man. Dude, I I just want to chime in real quick. You guys, you guys are great, man. I've had a blast hanging out with you guys tonight. Oh yeah. And and yeah, chat too. You, you guys are you guys are are the rock stars. So. There's still 59 people watching. We only got one thumbs down. And Hack and R2 are in the same thing, and we got one thumbs down only. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so like, you had to bring that up, didn't you? You had to jump. Yeah, thanks for that, buddy. Yeah. yeah. Quentin is the, Quentin's almost like he he's the bus driver, the big driving the bus of the haters. 
And as, yeah. as soon as he mentions it, we're here for everyone. Come on out. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> Between that and baiting me with those stupid names. <laughs> yeah, Yark. Yeah. Yark didn't right. up and yeah. we made it to me. Oh, FFS. <laughs> Where's the puppy dog? I want to see the big white puppy dog. Well, you want to see the okay? Oh yeah, where's bear? Uh, bear. 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 Where's bear? You scratch that puppy dog's butt. Come here. That's an awesome. Come here, buddy. Come here. Uh, hey. hey, up here. <laughs> there you uh, go. There's the bear. Broxel, no, we don't need any thumbnails. <laughs> I'm not sure if he's still on or not, but it seems we're shutting it down. You guys might want to, because uh, I'll probably end up going over there as well. As far as that goes, to Chatter, I think Chatter's live. Or, uh, oh, is he? Yeah, I think I think so. I'm not sure. I don't know if he's still on or not. But him and uh, Guitar Pit are doing their regular thing. Cool. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. Archie says he melts faces. That's why he gets thumbs down. R2 gets thumbs down because he cheats, man. <laughs> Fucking two handed. He starts whooping out that Wiggly Wiggly shit, man. I'm like, oh, you fucking cheater. I get thumbs down because I breathe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the mustache? It's the mustache. It's intimidating. It is. <laughs> it has a mustache, it mustache and the hair. And then, of course, you know, actually, oh, yeah. having, having, having the guitar skin. Anybody, anybody pay attention that when Eric talks, he sounds like God. Why? <laughs> Bless you, my son. Oh my god! Oh my god! All right, so let's uh, about some parting words. I'm just gonna go left to right on my screen. So, Brian, any anything you wanted to to say before we wrap this up? No, just uh, thanks for having me on, brother. It's a uh, it's a great night and. Uh, my regular show on Monday nights, I guess, is the only thing I've got to, to plug as far as shows, and it's a seven o'clock Monday nights. Cool, cool. That's okay. pretty much it. Dave R is not there, so we're <laughs> to Eric. Eric, what what do you got coming up? Uh, probably gonna be solo on Friday night. Sunday afternoon, I've got Chris from Blackstone Cherry on the Helix Hour, and the following Friday, I have Rusty Cooley on the, the EVH show. Holy nice. shit! All right, <laughs> look at you. Nice. Dave R is back. Anything you wanted to mention, Dave? Dave, when are you doing your next live stream? Oh, so tomorrow night, uh, I've got a special guest. Uh oh. Uh, so six six thirty Pacific time, nine thirty uh, Eastern time. Cool. Um, and that's just so you guys know, that's going to be my probably my last show uh, until we get this move taken care of. So yeah. Uh, I'll I'll try to be you know I'll try to pop in and in chats and and stuff on you guys as, as much as I can but it's it's going to be a busy couple of weeks so good you know, luck everything, that. hoping everything will be settled back down by early mid July and uh, get back into the swing of things and uh, so there we go that's that's about all I've got going on right. Well, hopefully, ho good luck to you, and hopefully, hopefully, everything will go goes all right, buddy. Thanks. Mm. All right, Jason Wade, what's going on with you, buddy? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. I, I'm in the chats. I like I'm a watcher as far as I guess I like watching and participating in the chats and <laughs> cutting up with people and stuff like that. And every once in a while, when I'm up two or three o'clock in the morning on the weekends, I'll noodle. Over a backing track and record it and <laughs> put it out, but for the most part, that's that's pretty much it. You do a great job in that, by the way, too. And you, you talked got, earlier about being feel yeah. on the guitar. You do a really good job, man. Well, thank mm -hmm. you, thank you. Yeah, really good. Yeah, I agree. What about you, Quine? <laughs> <laughs> I usually come on live just whenever I'm awake, and I want to leave. Uh, I want to leave uh, uh, Eric with his favorite single stringy thing a ding. -a. <laughs> but Quentin, what are you going to do when I bring Ace Frehley on the show? Because he's coming. And what, what are you going to do? You're not going to show up or what? I'll be sleeping. <laughs> no good. Dude. I'm still waiting for that day, Eric. You probably Rusty, you got Rusty Cooley coming on. That guy is a freak of nature. He is. He sent me. Yeah. He literally texted me and said, "Happy Father's Day." Nothing else. Nothing more. Nothing. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. 
So Hack, when I bring Ace on, um, you, I'll bring you on as a guest. You can ask him a special question. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that would be that would be mm -hmm. insane. That's that would absolutely be insane. Um, <clears throat> all right. So I, I think I already done my speech, uh, everybody. Thank you all so much for popping in. You guys rock. Uh, uh, thank you, Hack. You're great, man. We love your show, buddy. Mm -hmm. Oh, I appreciate yeah, it, man. You guys all rock. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks, everybody that stuck with us for these shit two hours. Um, yeah, I've got, uh, if you guys are interested, I got a new, a new merch store. <clears throat> the links are below if you if you want some new designs. I uh, got some uh, new shirts and mugs and things like that. Check that out. Uh, if you want to support the channel and, uh, and uh, get a little NAM fun going, and let me know. If you do, people are sending me uh paypal stuff and then they're not mentioning that they want picks and then they asked me for picks a while later i've i the picks that i i got already they've all been spoken for so if i get a couple more people that <clears throat> um support the channel and you want picks please let me know and then i'll do uh i'll do another order of picks and send some out and i might do a different design this time so you get a different look at pick than the original batch so and everybody I sent out my picks to, I sent them out yesterday. Actually, uh, my dentist called me. He already got his pick. <laughs> Your dentist. <laughs> if you um, must live down the street. <laughs> if you uh, uh, if you message me on Facebook, I'll try to send you a pick. I've got about maybe ten or twelve left. Here, let me go to. Can you all see that? Yeah. Presenting. Yeah. Uh, it's like the that finger. Hang on, hang on. Let me present you. Good friggin' Hello. figure. Hello. There. There okay, that's that's the front of the pick right there. Right. I don't know if it, the writing's pretty small, but uh, you're not gonna read that. It says Quentin fucking James. <laughs> if you want to pick, message me on Facebook. Um, I just ordered like 30 of them. I'm not charging. I'll just throw them in. An, I'll just throw one. You only get one. I'll throw one in an envelope and mail it out to you. And um, like I say, I got maybe 10, 10 or 12 left that I'll send out. If you want one, message me on Facebook. It's just Quentin James. And uh, I don't know if I'll order them again because they cost me like 35 bucks. It's like, that's a real stupid yeah. idea. Yeah. They're mine, mine are, my 30 picks were 50 bucks. So that's not bad. Oh, shit. <clears throat> yeah. So thanks to all the moderators in the chat. You guys, oh, Turner, oh, yeah. R2, Chicken Guitars, and anybody. Yeah, thanks to uh, the a Enforcer. Does mm. the Enforcer? Enfor yeah, she's in here. Okay. Yeah. No, definitely the best moderators I have, man. You guys all rock. Great team for sure. Okay. And uh, we'll catch you all on Thursday at uh, my regular time, 8 o'clock solo show. So hopefully we'll catch you Thursday. Thursday is going to be the great debate. So we'll see how that goes. Oh, wait. Sylvester, Sylvester wants to say bye to everybody. See you later. Kissy, kissy. I love you. Kissy, Sylvester. Kissy. <laughs> All right, guys. I gotta, I, I'll see you later. Thanks, Hack. Love you guys. All right. Stay on, stay on, stay on, guys. All right. Okay, okay. folks. Yeah. We'll catch you Thursday. Cheers. Take care. You guys, you guys are awesome. Have a good night.